We are live at the Microsoft MTC here in Malvern, PA. Uh, you've got Chris Gomez and Andy Schwamm. Hello. And Rich Ross behind the, the uh, camera back there. And we are here at the uh, board. At the board. At the board. Yeah. Like there's monitors, equipment, headphones. It's really pro. It's pretty sweet stuff. And so we are here after the Philly.net meetup where we had a Blazor hands-on lab. So that's something coming in .NET Core 3. And I think there's a lot of excitement about Blazor. It's a brand new way of doing things for .NET developers. It's cool. I mean, it, it's it cool. cool. I think it's cool. I mean, I'm hedging my bet on you know the guaranteed future of the thing. But there's no question about it. It's cool. And it shows some really interesting possibilities, right, with WebAssembly. The whole, the whole core technology behind a thing, it's, it's amazing, right? Yeah, I think it's, um, my take on it has been it's a modern, more modern view of web development than I think we have in, in MVC anymore. Um, not that there's, there's nothing wrong with MVC. I, I think uh, I remember previews being approximately 10 years ago now. <laughs> and I just kind of feel that when you look at what's kind of trending in web development, you do see component-based uh, architectures and component based frameworks and MVC is controller based that's just what it is and it was for a time I think it came out at a similar time when one of the trends on websites especially e-commerce sites that were very resource based was that the URL guided you to where you were going it said you were at the, the, the store.com whatever store it was slash music slash albums slash five and that meant something Right, and um, I think that's that's a perfectly fine way of of setting up your site if you can think of your site as something that's resource based. So stores, documentation, um, encyclopedic type things, or catalogs. Maybe you're doing a site. Uh, you're, you're like a movie site. So that, you know every movie is a resource, and that, that that URL, that natural URL fit probably works pretty well. But what if you're a social media site? Um, I feel like there I just kind of want to see a wall of the stuff that's relevant to me. That's what all the big social media sites do. Mm -hmm. So is that resource-based anymore or is it, um, okay, a specific tweet has some GUID attached to it. I'm not actually sure if they use GUIDs, but certainly a unique number. Right. And that's unique forever. And so... It's, it's a different look. And uh, so I just don't know that that architecture fit everywhere. And I do see, I do see teams that they take MVC because it's, it, it's been the default in, in .NET for a while and ASP.NET for a while. And they're kind of shoehorning in like, well, okay, so we have our home controller and then our about controller and then our, our form that we enter data into. It feels more like a page-based application, not a controller. But I mean, it still works. It still works right. fine. You've done a lot of MVC. You've had a, a lot of ways to do stuff. That's yeah. what it really comes down to. Yeah. Like like you, yeah. you actually, you know, here at, at Philly.net, you had a uh, a Friday code camp talk end to end, and you MVC was the target, right? You weren't doing web forms. <laughs> well, it was MVC, and I, you know, listen, I taught MVC. I did that as one of my user group sessions. You know, I don't know, ten years ago, whatever yeah. it was, I don't know, but but, um, and I've had a few people say that you know they were anti MVC and they yes. learned it from me, and you know it came around. I was like, wow, that's kind of cool. I was I was proud of that. I was happy about that. Yeah. Uh, the end to end thing I was doing though was not just MVC target no. because one of the things my issue with with this plain vanilla MVC, if you want to call it that, I don't I don't know what the name is, but you know, uh, using a lot of Razor. Is that you didn't get the uh, easily asynchronous mode of it so I was using some JavaScript frameworks on the front end and sort of mixing it together with MVC I wasn't using a spot it wasn't like that sure. but it was sort of a, a hybrid right 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 trying to answer that problem and there's a lot of ways to an answer these problems yeah right? because yeah. I wanted to have client-side um, you know uh, reloading of pages without doing full refreshes and things like that but blazer sort of you know, well, it's of, a different way. It's component-based. Yeah. And it's not trying to be 
It's not trying to be NBC. It's not trying to be Razor Pages, which is a page-based model mm -hmm. that also use. It's still server side. It also uses the Razor markup so that you can insert little nuggets of code and expressions that get evaluated on the server, kind of just in time. Okay, it's going out right now. But but and the same thing happens with NBC Views. But what Blazor takes it one step further, as we saw in the hands-on lab, where I uh, something could happen interactively that triggered code that you wouldn't immediately think was going to be triggered. You thought like, well, didn't you, you saw the way I was able to determine whether um, whether to display or not to display something that was, with an if statement and it wasn't, well, where's the state machine that's handling this? Yes, yeah, so what I was, one of the questions I wrote down, because I really enjoyed this session today. Uh, I came in a little late, I saw part of Bill's, but I, I saw your whole session. And what I was interested in, what, what Blazor, most of the time, right? So we've done this, this We've had the same outcome before with other frameworks, so, so to speak, right? Which is that we can have a page that's reactive to, to changes mm -hmm. and things like that, or there's just there's other ways of doing it. But usually you have to write some sort of binding like uh, statement or an expression that says, when this, when this thing in the back changes, I want to know about it, right? A subscription, if right. you will. So where's that in Blazor? Because it just seemed to just happen. It just seemed, yeah. So, you know, um, it turns out that Blazor's become a big topic and we rarely scratch the surface. But I think we can, we, can, uh, we can look at a little bit of code just to see what you're talking about here. Yeah. I do have Visual Studio up. Um, so we'll, we'll see if we can get that going. close that output second. window make it a little bigger. If you don't, you know. Close this one? No, well, yeah, like yeah, oh, we don't. Yeah, I guess we don't need the output window space for people to see. see. There you see a go. Bunch of code. There you so, go. Oh, so, so is that better? Yeah. 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 Looks good. So, um, on the right, we've got Solution Explorer here, and in a in a Blazor app, we see that that you have pages, which that doesn't feel too different from Razor Pages. The difference well, is, except, yeah, all of these are components. Well, and the name, by the way, it's worth pointing out the name of the. Sorry, they. You can the, now uh, use dot razor. Yeah, yeah, dot razor. Originally, you can. I, I actually believe you can still use dot chtml. I don't know if that's going away in terms of Blazor. I don't think it is. But why? Why the dot razor name? Is because they really want to drive home the component aspect of this. Every single one of these things with a dot razor extension is a component called a razor component. It just so happens that everything we did tonight, it felt like a page because, for example, um, if we just run this app just to give some context, and I'm not going to run the stuff that I did. I'm just going to show. So if you did a file new project Blazor app, you get something that looks a lot like this, and the interactivity that they show you is this counter. And when you're clicking here, not too impressive. It's just updating, but it turns out that's not happening with server side refreshes. Mm -hmm. We could sit here. I could open F12, and you, I'm not going to do it. Nothing's happening. It's and not going back and forth. Right. right. We know so, that. We've, we, yeah. we trust you on that. We established right? that yeah. that all works. So yeah. when you say, well, what does that code look like? And this, is, I think, was the baffling part is it looks like this. Yeah. So you've got, if you're familiar with Razor Views, this isn't too unusual to say, okay, I've got a paragraph tag. And yeah, you know, I, we do this in Razor Views, whether it's MVC Views or, or Razor Pages. We basically say, hey, go get this value out of the model and just plop it there. But that happens at server side and then it doesn't change. It gets shipped to the browser. It's static, right? Unless you wrote some JavaScript to go go deal with it. And I yeah, think that's sure. what you were talking about. Yeah, I mean, I'm wondering if this, behind the scenes they're injecting in some sort of like code that says uh, current count up top is listening because otherwise you're just changing it. Uh, like how does it know to, yeah. I don't so, know. Like, yeah. So what happens is, is, is this button we saw on the page that said click me, this is a little, little uh, reminiscent of the way we used to do JavaScript, but you're basically saying here, when somebody clicks on this button, I want you to run this code. And where's the code? It's right here. And all the code does is increment the int right. that's being displayed here. So the question is like, well, where's the wiring? Where's the state machine that says I'm listening for that that's button? That's what I'm talking Go about. Where's something. the yeah. listening logic? It's gotta be just baked into it's, the framework. It's baked somehow. into the yeah. framework, exactly. Why not is, is just bake it in? Is, now, is, is, sometimes when you bake it in, if every variable, I'm just hi hypothesizing mm -hmm. here, but if every variable has like automatic two-way binding, I know from my ex other work I've done with similar things, that, that tends to slow things down. That's, a, that's noisy. There's a lot of noise going on in the app saying, I've changed, I've changed, I've changed. And who's listening? Who's listening, right? So... But this stuff seems to be very fast. There's no question about it. Yeah, and so what's really, I think, happening here is that 
see there's it's dotnet dll happening there's a dotnet dll running in the browser being compiled right. by a dotnet runtime that happens to be run on WebAssembly. right and what they've done is they've built blazer components such as that button that when something happens it can react to it and it can go and change change the dom right and that's all they're doing is yeah. going and changing, going, the, changing dom. the dom right. now for now you've mentioned that word components a, a bunch of times yes yeah. right so i don't want to put mm -hmm. you on the spot but maybe you can explain a little bit about yeah. what that means why right. that's important right so we uh when i ran the app earlier and i'm trying to run it again i, I was hoping that it would come back up so that we could is it uh, not working yeah here we go so <laughs> okay that, uh, good demo uh, yeah <laughs> it doesn't work <laughs> the counter dot razor uh, you know the the fact that all i have to do uh, i can click here to go to slash razor to go to slash counter but if i just go to that spot slash counter i get this page sure. so the question is like well how does that happen well, it turns out this is all the wiring the routing is all just this page directly right which is really simple so there's no route table or whatever you want to call it like route.config no. you know or whatever you whatever well we did i mean it's not that that stuff isn't available is to you yeah right it's just that that's pretty simple right but now but they've moved that way with mvc as sure. well with the uh attribute, attribute based, based routing sure. and stuff so well the question is though is i thought you kept telling me this was a component it sure right. feels to me like this is a page it seems like a page well what if i go do this what if i go to the index page and i just come here and i say well let's instantiate one of those counters <laughs> okay Right. Let's which just is, do it right here. Oh uh, yeah. Oh yeah. And, and I can syntax, and I can right? self close but, it, which yeah. is kind of not really HTML-y. That's but that you can self close okay. it. Okay. And let, and now let's run it. You can self close it, but you have to self close it. By the way, it didn't seem I don't like think it liked I had it. To. Okay. But I, you know, I'm just curious. You might yeah, be right yeah. that I. Didn't no, I don't know. I don't know. So I took that counter, even though the counter component has routing built in. Yeah. If I just take it, so what is it going to be like a page within a page or something? Here it is. Here's the counter. It's so here. you're not on the counter page. I'm not. I'm Let's on index. Let's just be clear still. about that. You're on index. Yep, I'm still on index. Home, right? And basically what's happening is this is getting rendered. The H1, yeah. the paragraph yeah, tag, yeah. The, the, the button that has on click, and its code works. The code right. works. So so that's a component. Component, Think of a, we're thinking of this as a reusable piece. Maybe it's a calendar control or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Something that, or a list, maybe that I want to reuse that same list on a lot right. of pages. And that was the team roster example, was what we did in the lab is we built this component, this page, that all it really does is it's, it's pretending that you're like building a team. And so what you do is you get a list of people on the team and then you got to select right. people. And so you click on them to select them. And really we wanted to show interactivity. So clicking on them adds to the list and then yeah. you know it's nothing special about it but the list is being built on the fly and look it's, it lets me add the same person again and again it's not a big deal but that happened that wasn't there a second ago right and all of a sudden boom there it is so one of the things that you that you want to do in components and we didn't do a whole lot of this but so I have this component counter and the counter code this is hard coded that it always increments one right well what if what if um, what if instead, what if I was able to, to create a counter and uh, and use, and say, what if I could do something like this? Like, wouldn't that be cool? If I could say that it increments by two, but okay. then I'd have to come back into the counter component here. Yeah. And I would say, I gotta say that, I, that it has a parameter. So you use this attribute and then um, I say that I want a private int and I have to give it the same name, increment. Hmm. And now that I've done that, and then let's say by default. But this is weird. Default, this is a little weird to me because yeah. this is just in that code block. Mm -hmm. It's not like at the top specifically as an attribute of that code block. It's not, def you know what I mean? It's just in that code block. And this is a smell to me. Maybe there's more to it, right? Maybe there's better patterns. But there's a smell there that this is going to get messy, this code block. This, you know, we don't want to get to a place, I don't think, we want to get to a place where we have like, all kinds of code going on in here and yeah. in your demo today i was glad you changed it a little bit because in demo today you put like a class in there and right. i was a little bit having a little throwing up in my mouth a little bit um in the back of the room when you did that but you then later went and moved it out to show that it really would be a class in another file or i think you did it like that right you? and so i think, you know what i mean when i like i, and, I, and I, I didn't bit. i didn't finish that part yeah. which we can finish tonight because we ran a little bit of, we ran short on time but if i if i think i've done this right if I say this and I parameter? take this and I say, okay, 
plus so it's a it's a, a property is i'm what i'm basically saying here is, is i want you to be able to increment let me double check that i've done that right yeah i want you to be able to increment the counter by more than by some arbitrary amount but starting with one is that well, what by default, default? Yeah, by default if one, you don't right. set an increment then it's one yeah so i think i can come back here now and i could I, you know i can not have this at all right and, and it's i can work. and i can build it and i could run it and it would work yep. but let's see if intellisense helps me it does it's, oh that's nice intellisense is saying yeah. oh there's a parameter here called increment and i can set it to two and actually let's set it to 20 and now let's run it how much would you have given for like IntelliSense like that like ten years ago? It's amazing sometimes, how quick they have new things like Razor, Blazor. Sometimes I would like IntelliSense like that today, but yeah. Yes. Well, <laughs> but I mean, even the fact that like when they're building something new, this isn't shipping yeah. yet, but they've already got that kind right. of it, stuff in it, there. It's it was a big of, priority for the development experience, right? To be good, you had to show. And, that. and I feel like a lot of that comes from Steve Sanderson. If you watch his his videos, it, it really a lot of this is his brainchild. He sort of shocked the world at NDC when he did a talk called Web Apps Can Really Do That? And he brought up things like WebAssembly, and then he kind of, at the very end of his talk, he brought up other things too, but at the very end of his talk, he said, so, I've been playing around with this idea. Yeah. What if you did WebAssembly and .NET, and you had this FA framework, and people right. just went crazy? Hey, so, you know, it's worth mentioning. I just feel like I got to, I don't know why, but I'm throwing this out. You talked about that end-to-end uh, -end talk. I used to do that full-day workshop. And I was saying, well, it wasn't just ASP.NET yeah. Razor, it, it used JavaScript. Right. Well, the JavaScript I was using was Knockout, okay. yep. which is written by Steve Sanderson. Steve Sanderson, and right? Also, who <laughs> so. also, when he brought that up, when he, if I remember correctly, the history on Knockout is he showed it at Mix in 2006. You have a good memory for that kind of stuff. Okay. And I believe that no one had ever seen anything like that, a yeah. two-way binding yeah. JavaScript framework. No one had even conceived of it. We were using jQuery. Yeah, it predated you know the Angulars of the well, world, yeah. or at least as well, far as I recall. Inspired them. It inspired them, right? Yeah. And so that's why I actually liked it because I liked that it was lightweight, and just did the binding stuff for you, and you didn't have to worry about all the other stuff. Now right. I've, I've since switched to oh, sure. doing other but, things. But, but the key was is Knockout came out. Yeah. And and at the time, what were we doing? We were using probably using jQuery, and we were just writing all the code to update the DOM. Oh God. And, and it was, he was, and it was a mess. And he clearly taking some inspiration. Well, I was using from, Silverlight at the time yeah. to do that, as a matter of fact. Which had binding. <laughs> Which had binding. And so yeah. did things like WPF, and that's Windows stuff. But binding in desktop frameworks is, was not new. I don't right, care if it right. was. I don't care what language there or was what ways platform to do you're it. on. There was ways to but do it. But we didn't have that in the web. And and I remember if you watch, you could watch that video if it's still out there. And the comments in it were people saying like, "This is a game changer." Game changer. No one's ever done anything like this. But now Sanderson's so, doing it again. Another right. Game right. changer. I don't know how you got. How about a guy who comes up with idea? Yeah. And then another idea. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, I'm jealous. He's so smart. He's, He's amazing. Awesome. So, Rich, 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 you want to jump in? Well, I just wanted to mention that I. Uh, Wow, that's loud in my headphones. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was starting to take Andy's advice that I need to turn up my volume. Good. I think I went a little too far. But it was far. too loud. <laughs> you're, yeah. you're, you're. So essentially what, what I was looking at was um, there's a wiki TV page, but it talks about uh, Knockout Web Framework from Steve Sanderson. Uh, actually, the initial release was 2010. 2010. Now, he may have had some beta versions back yeah. at those early versions of Nick. But um, oh yeah, you might have been seeing previous stuff. mix. But anyway, the point was, so you're saying it was a while his memory's ago. not as yeah, crazy. No, Thanks, his memory perfect. is not well, you perfect. You hook him on different, and you know, there's a lot nice. that's happened. You know, new things that have come through, basically. Right. But, you yeah. know what? Mix. I think I think the last mix was around 2010. Because isn't that when Windows Phone came out? And the last mix was like, when they announced Windows Phone. I have yes. such a bad head for dates. Yeah. Like I can tell you how to write code, but if you ask me like what year things are and I can tell you like what version sometimes like I can say oh I know generics dot net 2.0 you know or something like mm -hmm. that right but you ask me like what year it is I don't know yeah. sometimes I can remember the Visual Studio version because they used to be more spread out I can't remember dates you, you got a great head for dates and things well like that, apparently right? I'm not they're not, they're accurate. not that good yeah so just that you were right about the other because the 2010 is when Windows Phone came out it was November yeah. 2010 All right. and that mix at 2010 mixed. I was there as well hoping to get they announced you know, it to the world exactly they shocked the world with it they said hey guess what brand new phone and oh by the way the programming platform is not c plus plus embedded it's it's silverlight yeah it was the primary platform yeah and i bought one and i had it for a bunch of years yeah. that phone yep. and i did silverlight development and yeah. i you know i did all these things right mm -hmm. and uh i mean we could get into the whole debate over windows phone and the fact <laughs> that i think it was a really good idea i think they did something they tried to do it different yeah, and their live tiles was still better than anything out there. There are a lot of people who still miss 
miss I, some of the interface for sure. Yeah. Now, was it perfect? No, of course not. No. But but live tiles was a great idea. Anyway, yeah. so we're we're yeah. So this counter component that I'm that I'm now I gave it a property that now will increment by whatever number I put here. Yeah. So this instance of it in the index page, which is really a component, but whatever, it's being rendered as a page. It increments by twenty. That's, but on that but page, I, but yeah, this yeah, component, yeah. Right. I didn't touch this one. Yes. So it increments yeah. by one. And I could have another one. I could, I could have another. So really, this but it is, was easy also, was, which is it was pretty simple yeah. for me to add that. I did it from memory how to add a parameter. Yeah, I was. I, right? That was good. I, which, I noticed you typing. I was, like, oh, was kind of like, hmm. I don't yeah. know. Maybe I will remember yeah. how to do it. Um, we you probably we, had a snippet in here that well, you're not telling us about. I cheated and looked at this heading component when I wasn't sure. Okay. Because well, we did yeah. this, we did this yeah. in the talk. Is we yeah. is, is since we spent so much time talking about, you know, pages. It's very easy to get lost on the idea that well, everything's a page. What makes it different from Razor Pages? And so in our roster page where we were showing that list of people, I just wanted to say, look, I can build a component. And I can even make it parameterizable, if that's a word. I think it's a word. I and, use uh, it. <laughs> and, and, and I can include it on another page, which is all that this was. There's nothing special about it. But you're right. This code, it's C-sharp code, right? And um, you get other things like dependency injection, because what's something that you want to do on your, on your client side page a lot? Very quite often, without a page refresh, you want to go call an API. Right. Have wanted people, we want to do it all the time. So, it's, so in plain vanilla JavaScript, you want to do either like a fetch or an XML HTTP request, or you're using whatever's in the framework of your choice. Right. Here in, in uh, Blazor, we can use dependency injection to say, hey, can you make sure you instantiate one of these system.net HTTP yeah, clients? Yeah, yeah. .NET developer is very familiar with HTTP client. And then I come down to the code, and I can just use it. And I even get a sync await with it. Yeah, so one of the questions I had, and again, I know that I don't want to put you on the spot. Well, I know we'll you're see still if learning I know. this if stuff. I know, but, I don't know. So as soon as I see something getting injected there, the first thing I think about is, well, what about like an interface or testing? You know, so like, can I inject? So testing, we can come back to that because I think that's an interesting thing. Stuff. Yeah, I'm writing a note there to come back to testing. But can I in, can I inject in an interface? Like, does it have that kind of mapping logic? Yeah. Do you know, or have that's you... a great question. Okay, well, I, I think I you know the know, answer. I don't what? know. The oh, answer okay. I thought you were. But, yeah. But if I think about it for a little bit, it makes you wonder if you could you would want to inject at the end of the day, you want to inject the concrete type, I think. But you usually inject it but then down by, here would you, you want to use, use it as an as interface, a, right? Right, because you, down here you'd want to use the interface. Yeah, you want to this would be something for us to look into because one thing we haven't shown here is the taking this code out and having a code behind experience. Yeah, so that right. So that's what I was wondering. I think, and this is interesting. Yeah. Because what I'm guessing is going to happen is, it, can we do that, by the way, in a simple oh, yeah. Okay. So I was thinking, well, we're going to take this behind, this from here, and we're going to turn it into a code behind experience. And tell me why, as a, as a modern developer, do I all of a sudden feel better about it, that it's in a code behind, but really, it's not really separated. You know what I mean? But yeah. like somehow, I'm feeling better. So Am I the only one? You know, you've... You, I even said tonight that I sort of learned to kind of love this because um, it does make everyone who is used to MVC and even web forms cringe a little bit that it's on the same page. But I would submit kind of to you that even though web forms had a code behind experience, it was pretty darn hard in web forms to write unit testable code. Yeah. You could do it, but it was awfully easy to just be click, 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 let's throw it right, right in the method. Yeah. And frankly, you can throw everything in the controller too and be done you with it. You can still do all that. You can still do it wrong. But that's not what this is about. This isn't right. about like, because you can always do it wrong. You can do always you, do it wrong. You can always do that. It doesn't right. matter how hard. So, so as well, long as it supports some kind of injection. But you framework. gave me a yeah. really good idea in terms of what if I could inject a dependency but then use it in the code behind in an interface form because then now I can write unit test against that code, yeah, especially yeah. if I pull that code out and put it in a completely different project. Even. Yeah, yeah, right. If it's not in this page, if it's a class, if yep. it's a traditional class, then we know like our test runners Couldn't can I, access I everything. Test it. Yeah. yeah. So, I would think so. so how do you do that? Um, let's see. Are we going to so, try? Yeah, Is that let's where try we're going right now. So, Sorry. I like this. I don't, You're a brave man. I don't really have... In a, I don't know what to call this, right? We we already used the models term because earlier in earlier in this, these models 
so when you call, one of the things about Blazor that was pretty cool, right, is when I called this HTTP API, let me get rid of the breakpoint so this is obvious. When I called and said, hey, I want you to make a get call. I just want you to call that API with a get. Yeah. But I, I don't wanna I don't want to parse JSON. So can you do it strongly typed with this team yeah, roster sure. generic? And then we built this uh, class, and this class just maps the JSON. The JSON has an array of results, and then everything is just mapped from there, and it just does it. It maps it for you. Right. Not unusual. We have AutoMapper as a very famous open source project. And then even JSON.net will do mapping like that for you. So yeah, yeah. that's not an unusual thing. But but that's not really mapping. That's deserialization. It's right? deserialization. Yeah, yeah. You're right. So the question is 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 what if I'm really sick and sick of this this thing, mm -hmm. and I want it to go away? So I'm I'm not really hundred percent sure where the right place to put this is in the project. So let's not worry about that. And I'm just gonna just put maybe it here. you were talking about what's know. it called? It's maybe like a it's a view model. model. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly what I'm thinking. I, I, Another thing is this. So you can also inject the entire view model into the page, mm -hmm. right? Is that what you were thinking? You can yep. build a view model that has all your stuff like and that. inject the view model in. Yep. The view model has its own uh, injection points and things like that, right, for services and stuff like that. And if I remember correctly, um, now, I don't know what, yeah, I'm surprised they're not, they haven't shown any demos with calling it a view model or anything. How do you, you have a laser component? Is that it? No. Oh, so, so you need to, yeah, you need to make it a thing, right? It's not just a class. I think it's component base. Because if it's not just a class, I mean, if it's just a class, it doesn't have that on init stuff. Yes. Right. You want it. it. To, you want it to have the yeah. actions that you're expecting. You need right? to derive from component base. So what you're essentially doing here is Razor, Razor automatically for you will take this dot Razor file and generate a class for you that is the Razor component. But what we're basically saying now is, I got it, Razor. Yeah. I'll take care of it. So I derived off component base, which is in the new Microsoft.ASP.NET Core.Components namespace. So I got I got a little help there from IntelliSense after I typed this in. It was like, oh, hey, you want to add this using? Because I wasn't going to remember that. So now I got to bring the code over, right? And here's the code. And let's just try, let's start by just cutting and pasting. It's not perfect. This isn't all we have to do. But if I come in here and cut and paste. And you've never done this before, right? I have done this. You it's have in the done, lab. Okay. It's, it's in the lab. That, okay. It's just that I may not remember. No, that's okay. Really I was just wondering if you okay. were totally winging it because I was really impressed. Sort of winging it. Yeah, I'm pretty but still impressed. Really. So I don't really need this anymore. I impress easily, though. Do you? Yeah. Um, for one thing is in the code section, I can make these private because that class that's getting generated encompasses it encompasses the code block section yeah. and the markup. So it's okay to be private, yeah, but, now but you I want can't to do that anymore. So now they have to at least be protected. Yeah, but see, isn't that even better though? Because now I can have things that the page can access and things that the page cannot access. Sure. Whereas when they were in there, you could have, you, you could really couldn't have that boundary. Right. No, so you're right. I'm good. not saying this is all very yeah, yeah, interesting, yeah, right? Yeah. So now what else am I missing? Well, wait a second. How do I get this injected? Right? I need the HTTP client. How do I get it injected? Well, it turns out they have an attribute for that called well, but, inject. But I mean to say this is a cl you could also, I'm guessing, just use a constructor-based injection if you want it because this is a class, although maybe it doesn't have a standard constructor. How does it get wired up to component base? I don't know. I yeah, don't know. Yeah. Um, and then I think that I have to do more than this. Um, so you can still do this attribute-based. Oh, so it's not constructor what? injection. It it's like a know property injection, I guess. Well, it's property injection. So yeah. back here in this, we have this inject thing to, to say, I, I want you to put in my class an instantiated HTTP client and call it HTTP. Yeah, yeah. Well, we got to find a way to do that here. Yep. And so now I, I believe I've done this. So do you take it out of that other page? Yeah, okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that you out. You don't need that. I, I'm actually not even sure, 100% sure I can have it. So <laughs> okay. I, I'm not sure though, but I, I'm not done yet. I need to now say that I inherit. Uh, but that it. makes sense, right? And so uh, I need to inherit from try blazer dot model. Um, what was it called? It was called roster view model. I'm not sure if I needed to fully qualify this. Uh, what are you complaining about? Oh no, probably it, it fixed yeah, it. you probably need to. Fully, I might not yeah. have needed to, and the reason why I might not have needed to you have is the using of this. It. Yeah. So let's see what happens. But who knows what order those things really get? You know, I think to. that's good. That's cool. I think that's good. But I don't know that I'm done. Because I'm not sure about this thing. I'm not so, sure about this thing. Well, what? Why? That's just an. That's just a, a. That's just a variable. Team roster is just a variable. Right. 
Yeah, but now but how's, how's the other gonna thing going to get it? How's it going to get yeah. access? So I'm kind of thinking maybe turn it into a property. That it has like to get her yeah. yeah, it has to become a property based protect. I think that has to happen. Well, it's interesting that it's protected it. and not public. But okay, you know. well, I think I could make it public. Well, no, obviously it's got to be accessible yeah, right. from here though. But private will block it still. And so let's give it a shot. And you know that private will be blocked. That's your. That's power Oh come on. Rich, I knew he couldn't do it. <laughs> HTTP is inaccessible. Oh, well, so like, for one thing, I left the code. I left the code block in here. Oh, so there was so all kind of conflict it. there, right? So, well, it okay. was basically saying you got rid of yeah, the injects yeah. thing, so I don't know what that is anymore. And it's building the it's building, building the assembly. It's building the assembly. Come on. And we go to team roster, and it's all it's all gonna work. Everything works. It, it, look, it already made the HTTP call. Everything works on the fly. Yeah, and the flowers are still standing, but that was in our talk tonight. So um, we, I always like to make a Bitly link with today's date. So today's the the seventh. You know, it's twenty. Is yep. it, what year is it? Twenty nineteen. Uh, the seventh month, the tenth day, and I will go directly to the lab. And it turns out that that in the lab at the very end, we say a clean code behind experience. So. Yeah. I basically just kind of re-derived this and yeah. Brought it from your head. That was good. Yeah, Listen, yeah. you know what I always like um, in shows is like the quick tips and the little things. It's the little things that go by when you're moving fast. And there's two things from, from today, earlier today, that you talked about that I thought were worthy of pointing out that honestly it's not blazer stuff and maybe I'm changing topics. So you, you can you can police that if, if I'm drifting here. No, but um, the first thing is that cool API that you showed. That Random gives user. usernames. I mean, that's just one of those things that comes in handy. So maybe for, for people that weren't watching the, the show earlier, yeah. the, the live broadcast, you've got this API right. that uh, how often do we need things like that, right? right. It's kind of like the lorem ipsum of yeah. user generation. Even if you know that the API you're going to call is going to have a different look and feel and schema, you're like, but I just want to start writing the code. Yeah, sure. Right? I can, I right. can. in fact, that might what, even be a good excuse. We lose, we lose and Chris is. It's, it's blinking. It's blinking, huh? It might, that might even be a good excuse for you to say, okay, let me make sure that I abstract the schema portion of this so that I can swap that code out later, but I want to get the rendering in now. Sure. I want to yeah. get the service call in now. Right. I want to get that stuff right. really fine tuned. Yeah, we'll get to well, that stuff later. When I was building this, I was said, you know, I don't want to build, I don't want to come up with names and addresses and whatever. Well, right, because this is just so, a demo anyway, yeah, right? So can I just like get 10 people? So, yeah. And it turns out this random API lets you, you know, you just call random API. And if you just call it, if you just call it with, with nothing, no parameters, you just get a user. And in fact, when you use it in a browser, they say, okay, here's one. Here's her pretend email address. Yeah. Here's her pretend birthday. Pretend that. Yeah, have a nice little UI in there, by yeah. the way, for that. To Even that. a pretend a password, cool. right? Oh, her password. Well, I mean, no. you could, now you I could know her start, password. You could start, you could come up with a, you could basically call this out and come create fake users, fake personas for your app, and they'd have All right, fake so let's passwords. be clear that Julia Coleman is These are not, not real a people. person. Yeah. I think they probably just match I, first names and last names. You randomly. donate, you can donate, uh, your likeness to this, like you can basically oh, say, oh, nice. you can, I can use put my, my photo. Picture. In yeah, it. you say my oh, picture is fair game, cool. right? You just yeah. got to give them some public domain image, and they'll, that's kind of cool. And right. I'm pretty sure about that. Uh, Maybe we should it. all go ahead and do that. Yeah. I guess, or right? I think you can even give them money too. Right. So the other thing that you showed it was cool, and I think we talked about this last week, but I'm not positive when we we're talking about tips and tricks. And we were talking about Mads' stuff, and you showed how you had the um, the class that represents the deserialization of that JSON. And I was guessing, and you didn't mention it earlier, but I'm guessing you used like paste as code. Paste, I didn't. You didn't use paste JSON no. as code. We just talked about no. that last week, didn't we? And and part of the reason why I didn't was only because I was learning Blazor as I was doing it, so I was kind of going through like, now, how does this work again? You know. Okay. So, but I agree with you. But you, you could have. I agree with you. Well, let's see. Let's see. Is it that easy? If I go to so here. Here is some. Here, oh no, that's not. Now you have to have the JSON have example, JSON which I have. Yeah. I have a sample. Right. I just gotta. Because you want to show, like, it, it's kind of sh shows how easy it can be to, to use an API like this and then deserialize it into C sharp, which isn't so a Blazor thing. Today's lab. So here's today's lab, and somewhere on here I've got roster.json. There it is. 
and here's the JSON. So if I grab yeah, that, right, and then let's go ahead and go to a blank. Yeah, give yeah, myself some right. space. Okay. All right. Just in case this one gets get angry yeah. later. The names are going to be and duplicated. So you're going to get all kinds of paste. Yeah. It's, it's not like, here, is it? Uh, somewhere else. No, it's under paste. Right click. No, do paste. Just do right click and paste. I, I think, think it's a I paste think special. It's that simple. No, 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 no. I know, but if you right click uh, and I do, think, don't I have to come over here and say paste JSON as classes? Oh, maybe it's over there. I just did this the other day, and it was uh, way easier than I remembered it being. Oh, maybe I have a plugin that's showing the. It used to be built the, in though. Yeah. Okay. The paste, paste JSON, JSON as classes stuff. It's under paste special. Oh, maybe you have to go to uh, edit. Paste, yeah, paste special. There it is, paste special. There you go. That's what I was looking for. Yep. All right. And so there it is. So now usually you have to rename the upper oh, level node. But this is so. Notice that what I did, yeah, is what? is I stripped out all of JSON I didn't care about. Well, of course, which you is did. fine. Yeah, you're right. You can still but, do that. But yeah, you know what? And I, what you know, I usually do is I yes. go in that root object. It yep. doesn't know what to call that, so I rename. You that, can rename it. Uh, yeah. You know, whatever you want it to be. And I think this could be renamed too. Because this is the first place where it matters, because the, the array in the JSON um, is called results, yeah, which we yeah, can see so right here. So that, that's got to be that's the same. That's got to be that. But I think you could change root object. You yep. could call this person, and then I think you could change this and say uh, because technically it's a bring result. Back, or technically, I could get back ten people. Yeah. Technically. Right. So, you know. Anyways, the point is, you, is you're right. Yeah. Paste you JSON. Also, this would be ready to go. You can also change the name of the property. So if you, you could, can, yeah, yeah. So and over then you top can attribute of that, it, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's like JSON property colon. No, not there. So you could. Sorry. So first, let's just say I called this like. I know that I just said. So let's say I called them results or something. I don't know. And and for some reason, and I said that I wanted to call it this. You're saying that I can. I can you, attribute this, right? That's fine. The, that object name can be whatever it is. It's the right. other person that you changed. That's the one that you're attributing. Okay. Because it's going to look for that. Uh, yeah, because what's it's it, looking line for a string. To match. It doesn't know the real type. It's going to look for a string right. based on the name. And uh, it's called results. Yeah. yeah. So if you go above that at like line 38 and then do a, yep, and then JSON property. Nice. Uh, open parenthesis. It's parenthesis, and then name, uh, without quotes. Yeah, yeah, name. No, he's saying name. Like name without name quotes. Or something like that. Yeah, name. exactly. Or colon. Yeah, you're not getting the IntelliSense because your JSON property is not mapped uh, in uh, as a JSON object. Yeah, you okay, need hold to on. do the using. Yep. And I think you can also do this kind of stuff in your JSON deserialization. You can have like a class that it uses as like a. You can define this stuff elsewhere. I think. Right. Well, that's what this class yeah. would be. You would Does deserialize it. With, no, it I don't mean, yeah. I, I mean, I think there's a way to build up like. It's okay. Don't worry. Yeah. Does it work with Blazor? Oh uh, well, because it's as we tangent off on this. Yeah, I know. We're waiting. No, yeah. that's fine. I wonder. I wonder. Oh, closed. Closed by Steve. Steve Sanderson opened it so. So it must be fixed. <laughs> anyway, it's all over the place. I think that's an interesting, uh, an interesting thing that to look into and would make for a great way to like expand on the lab, right? Because the lab is one thing. You walk out of the lab and you say, "Oh, that was really interesting." And then this always happens to me. Then you spin the questions start, right? And Rich just had a good. You had a good one. Can you change the name of those things? Can you use paste JSON as classes? And right. Or like you said, can I put that code somewhere else? Would that help me with unit testing? Would I be able to use the interfaces instead of the concrete types? I don't know, but it would be really interesting to find out. And if the answer turns out to be no, open an issue with the Blazor team, although we're getting a little late in the game, and say, what's your plan for unit testing here? And just see what they say. Right. You might say like, oh yeah, we got that covered. Or, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I really, I truly don't know the right answer now. to it. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but it, it, was, it was definitely fun stuff. And, and what I thought was interesting is that so, there's a nav menu component that shows up on all the pages, but where? We never talked about this tonight. Where's the nav menu? How come? How does the nav menu get get uh, instantiated on all of these pages? The index pages. Oh, so what pages. you're saying is, where's the where's the um, yeah. what do you call it? Um, that sidebar. Yeah, yeah. Where's yeah. that? Well, page? it turns out it's easy to show people where the menu is, 
it's in a, it's, it happens to be in a component called nav menu that they deliver to you in the project. The nav menu is not a Blazor component. They write one and they ship it. You could blow this away and write your own thing with your own CSS and your own HTML. They do use some Blazor though, because Navlink is a Blazor component that, that knows how to go to other URLs. If you want to take, if you want Blazor, if you want to do really fantastic things with a component version of just an A tag, you'd want to use the nav link. But this nav menu, I didn't write this. This came with file new project. It, it's smart enough to know how to do a collapsible menu that shifts from the left to the top if you shrink down like you're on a phone or something and then gives you a little button that'll open it and collapse it. That's all this. But, but how did it get on this page? Yeah, how did it, I still don't get how it gets yeah. on that page. So the way it gets on this page is convention. There's gotta be another, oh, it's convention. It's convention. Is so by convention. So you don't have like a, a what's the word? I'm blanking out. What's the word I'm looking for? Like in, in regular uh, MVC, you have a- There's like a layout page. Layout page, map. thank you. And, yeah, and there is the conventions layout, with yeah. that too. But if in, in no, your- so much though. The layout page, you can put whatever HTML you want in there, Well, you right? can here yeah. too. Okay. So in the pages folder, we never looked at this underscore imports dot range, okay. which is this is by convention. If you include one of these in any folder, it now applies to all the components in that folder. So I double click so here. All the components in that, in that folder. folder and its subfolders. So yeah, yeah, but I don't know if that's well. I don't think you're wrong, but maybe this. that's not accurate though, because when you use the oh, but only when they're working as pages, right? Because you took the uh, counter. Mm -hmm as a component and right. you put it inside another page and we didn't see the nav menu twice did we no because in that case what we're we're using the razor component in another page that's what i'm saying right so but you can actually take this imports and you i could put it in components and it would apply to all the components it's just that it yeah it here what i'm doing is i'm saying i'm already kind of saying like well everything that gets routed let's put it in pages i didn't have to do that i could have taken components I could have taken that, I could have put that here. So it knows to make it a left nav bar. Well, what it knows is by putting this, is I'm using another directive saying, you wanna know which layout to use? Go get main layout. And main oh, layout's well, you didn't show that. Okay, but that's I could, what I'm talking about. I could take all of this. So that's what I'm talking about. Main layout is, that is could your layout the, route. Yeah. Okay. But you could take all of this if you didn't wanna separate it that much, and you could put it here. As long as imports.razor says here's what to do at least i'm pretty sure you could it sure didn't like that though did it well there could be other reasons for i thought that here. that worked so but let's so, say but whatever let's say so let's slow that down let's go back so there's a hierarchy this is, so to speak this, this is this how thing, they right? give you your file new project this is what right if you file new project blazer you get this i didn't do it right so in shared there's a main layout page. right so let's start with that right yep there's it's not a page i call it a page a nav menu component just like just like the heading component by the way I could have moved, I could have put this here. Yeah, it would work yeah. exactly the same way. Okay, so we have a main layout uh, yep. razor page. Yep. We have some, uh, or I should say, and we have some components that yep. we can use. Mm -hmm. The imports, In so here. how yeah. does it know to use the main layout for each of my, that's on the imports? That's here. The import says for any, so that's basically saying for anything under pages, Right. We're going to use the main layout. It's yep. just tying those together. And if we okay. and if for some reason you had a large project and you started making subfolders, yeah. you could put a different import in a different in subfolder. In, sure. Okay, that makes sense. And, and sometimes we it. want to have different menus and things like sure. that. Sure. So, um, it's interesting that we don't just say on the page itself um, use this layout, you know. So you can. You can. If I like let's let's change this. Let's uh, let's create another layout, and let's say copy, and then this was the, the trick Bill showed us, and then we'll rename mm. it, and we'll call this Andy's layout. Okay, so in, in Andy's layout, which I don't have open yet, so in Andy's layout, we're still gonna have the nav menu. Um, does the nav is the nav menu? I, I was gonna say, wouldn't that be cool if the nav menu? Let's go look at the nav menu. So the nav menu, does it have any colors in here or anything that we could You want to like pass something in or something like yeah, that? Yeah, it looks like, it might not. It's, yeah, it'd be kind of hard I'm not to, gonna worry about yeah, it. So back thing. in here, let's say in Andy's menu, just so that we know that we're in Andy's menu, we put Andy's something page. We put yeah. something that we don't forget. So we yeah, say, say hi, I'm Andy or something like that, yeah. 
we'll know that we're talking about Andy. <laughs> right? You know, last week, Chris mentioned Toy Story 4. Yeah. You remember that? Uh-huh. I think we've got a uh, fan. A I think I have a theme guarding. Yes. Yeah. You're a uh, Toy Story oh, guy, well, huh? I just thought Are you was... a Woody fan or an Andy fan or, you know? Uh, Woody's all right. I was okay. watching a show. What was I just watching this week where somebody says their favorite character on the Whoops. show was Andy's mom? Oh, I know. I think it was on like an episode of The Office. Oh. And I think it was like... It's probably Dwight. One of them said... I, I, I could be mixing up all this stuff while you're typing, you know. They said their favorite character was Andy's mom because if that Andy's mom didn't have Andy, there wouldn't be a plot. It was some <laughs> stupid thing. It was typical like Office, the show, The Office. Humor. That sounds like Dwight. I think it was um, no, I think it was Michael Scott. Oh, or well, or it was, okay. You know, I'll it was buy so that. weird. So let's say anyway, yeah. on so the fetch data page, I'm gonna go ahead and change the layout. I need new glasses. And say, um, yeah, this is what I was talking about. Right. Okay. So what was it? Layout. Change the layout. And I want it to layout. be Andy's layout. Okay. Simple okay. as that. And does layout have any extend? It's it's not defined as anything special. It's just a razor page, or whatever, right? It has inherits. Does it need that inherits layout component? Yeah, I guess it does. It should. I still feel like something's not right here. Where's your main layout? Main layout. Main layout. Andy's layout doesn't Maybe it has to be at the top or something like that. What do you? What does it red? What does the red thing say? Say anything? I can't read it from here. What does that say? It says that I couldn't. Um, Layout, main layout. It says that it couldn't find it. So, uh, what about like because? Yeah, so I'm saying maybe the order. Anymore. Yeah, maybe it's the order of it. Oh, oh no, there it is. Maybe it has to go under page. Well, that wouldn't make any sense. Under page. I might have to build it so it knows about yeah. the layout. No. Nope. But the point is, you think that we can. I wanted to see that work, but it so you 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 feel like there's a way to do something like yeah. this, right? So that that other thing is really just a shortcut that um, that where you inherit uh, the inputs. Imports, sorry. What else can go in the imports dot blazer, or dot razor, whatever that's called? I'm not sure anything else can go. Okay, in. I really just don't. know. It feels know. like a big file for that one thing. I guess is why I was saying, and it's called imports. It's you know. So let's take a look. Glazer layouts, right? This is what we talked about, and it says like you can. This is a this is a layout component, and then uh, oh, you, you can even put code in the. Layout We're getting component. that weird uh, grainy right. thing again, Rich. You did something last week to make that look better. Like I'm when I'm looking at this monitor, his see the text looks all grainy on the. You're not seeing that, where it has a yellow background. Oh, you know, maybe um, it's just there is, there is a body in here. I just didn't do it right. But there yeah. is a whole section on layouts. You can have nested, nested layouts. See how they say here a component can reference a layout, which in turn can reference another layout. So it sounds like it does kind of sound like they've thought it through. Right. Oh, <laughs> right. I'm sure they've thought it through. So uh, these guys are, you know, they're smart. They're smarter than us. So they're thinking this stuff through, which is, which is cool. I thought um, that would be interesting if that worked. That's okay that it didn't. Well, that's what I see. That's what I like about this show, and that, the fact that you're brave enough to just go ahead and do this yeah, stuff. Like, see what happens. Because what's the worst um, thing that happens? It yeah, it's, the whole thing's like a cool model. I, I really like this kind of thing. And so we, we played oh, upon like what, what happened in the show today earlier in the in the um, in the hands-on lab. But now it becomes a little question and answer. Except I'm the only one asking the questions, and you're the <laughs> only one doing the answering, right? I got the easy part. I actually may have not gotten that long. Um, all that leftover code. We had that leftover code. Remember from uh, when I when we were messing around with um, generating the uh, the classes. Yeah, yeah. I'm kind of. Oh, it's not Andy's razor. No, Andy's layout. Layout. Come on, work, work. It's got the squiggly no, it's from before. It. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. It. That's squiggly the whole thing from when you had just Andy. Okay, so. In the fetch data page, we have a different layout. It's Andy's layout. It says you've got a friend in, and there it is. You got so a different layout here. Different. I know they look kind of the same. That's why I was no, kind no, of thinking. Just, yeah. Wouldn't it be cool if this nav data we could tell it change that color, 
and then in the nav menu sure. component, right. we would say in that in, in that layout, we would change the, and I mean, look, you can nest this stuff. So yeah, that all did work. Now, oddly enough, this is still complaining, but whatever, it worked. We're happy. So uh, pretty cool stuff. And this is like the sample where they just read from a JSON file to show a quote unquote weather forecast, right? And honestly, just like everybody here should run and watch this, just, you know, NDC, this was actually published today. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Now I was I watched was his, good his version published three months ago, which is very similar talk at the okay. previous NDC in London. But this was at NDC Oslo, and it just so happened it was published today. So I said, well, I might as well show people the one from today. And Steve Sanderson demonstrating Blazor, and I really loved this graphic, which I'm just going to totally steal from him, which explains how it all works. Yep. Is that WebAssembly is in the browser. Mm -hmm. There is a .NET runtime. Uh, it, it's basically a version of Mono built in that compiled to WebAssembly, and then what happens is our .NET DLLs run in that runtime. We don't. The DLLs do not get compiled to WebAssembly. That's like the same bits as the DLO goes down to the browser and it runs in this runtime. It's pretty interesting stuff. So today it makes it a little big and that's one of the things he addresses in here is he says, ah, I know, a lot of concern about big size. Page load, so we're working on that. But it was bigger originally too. I, I haven't seen these talks. Yeah. But when we first saw this stuff, it, it was big and didn't have every, you know, like it's, I think they're, uh, are they are they pruning it? Well, is what it's doing? doing is it's pushing the .NET framework, or I'm sorry, .NET framework. It's pushing .NET yeah. Core and the future of .NET forward because since, since pruning, which is to take a DLL that in the past, like let's just say system.NET, mm -hmm. the only class we're going to use out of all the system.NET is HTTP client. But yet, what do we do on the desktop and on the server? We just send the assembly down. Who cares, right? Well, it doesn't space matter. Is free. Yeah, right. On the web, Mobile devices, not 3G in some parts of the world. Wouldn't it be nice if we just sent down the part of the assembly we need? And that's either called tree shaking or pruning, depending on what technology. Like, I think a lot of times they call it yeah, tree, shaking tree shaking over yeah. in uh, in SPA frameworks. But I believe I hear the .NET Core team calling it pruning, where they okay. say just the assembly you want. Well, there's a need for that for Blazor client side. There's also a need for that in .NET Core 3's desktop uh, frameworks because what they want to do is they want you to be able to write, take your WinForms app in .NET Core 3, compile it into a single XE that is everything. .NET Framework, your dependencies. Yeah, no more GAC stuff you're talking no about. No more anything. Yeah, no more anything, right. Forget yeah. the GAC, just well, like but, XE, right, but done. Yeah, you don't right. even install it. Well, I see what you're saying. Just oh, that's an XE, cool. just yeah. here you go. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And yeah. uh, in order to make that efficient, you're going to need pruning. Right. So now you've got two use cases. So where does the pruning happen? Is that something that like the compiler, if you want to call it that, is doing the pruning? Like when it builds the app? It would be app? at publish time. But at what I don't know time. is I don't know where it is in terms of technology. I don't know if it's going to be in .NET Core 3 or if it's something we can try right now for the .NET Core desktop stuff. I don't know the answer to that. But I know it's on the table because it's there's a need. And if you think about the future of Blazor, like you think well, about this yeah. now, if I can write .NET that targets WebAssembly, okay. which you don't even have to do because they have the server side model, right? Right, that's the whole thing. I mean, the Blazor stuff, right? I mean, I, if I remember seeing correctly, the Blazor, you can run server side Blazor yep. or client side right. Blazor. And if it's server side, a lot of people say, why would I want it? The WebAssembly thing sounded so, so awesome. Why do I want server side? Well, there are bonuses, right? The client now is thin. Sure. And maybe that's good for mobile. Uh, the negative, though, is you're not doing what SPA frameworks get to do today, which is put compute on the browser. Well, yeah. Everything's right. happening on your server. But you can do that if you're using client-side Blazor. Sure. Right? If there's something that you want to happen interactively on the client, um, you don't want a page refresh to be required, but you want that code to remain quote-unquote secret and hidden, you might want server-side yeah, Blazor. Yeah, yeah, right. That's a good point. Uh, That's a good point. It doesn't you, mean that in client-side Blazor you couldn't make an HTTP TP call well, back of course to get you would, it. Right, right? To you get could. that stuff, yeah. The other so, reason why server-side Blazor is useful is because it's actually going to be available in September. Client-side Blazor will still be a work in progress. Right, okay. So, you know, it sounds like we're getting close to something, and we've said 
we've said this. When I say we, I mean the collective we, yeah. developers. Right. Developers, developers, developers. We've said this before. Four words, I think. Four words. Write once. Run, run anywhere. Anywhere. For sure. Sure. We're trying. We're trying again. I feel like mm -hmm. there's a path for it because first of all, it, it's so easy to focus on the WebAssembly thing. But as I've even said on this show, I kind of stopped caring about that because to me, Blazor is a framework for building web applications that happens to be component based and then happens to have hosting models. And the hosting models are abstracted. It can run on the server. It can run in the client. I don't really care that much because it's practically it's practically a switch you flip to change right. it. They've even got examples of how to do it in the docs. Right. But if you think about this now, and this is totally me making, this is out of my head, although I'm pretty sure we've seen uh, some videos where this is discussed openly by these folks. If I, can, if I can now get to a place where .NET can target something that's pretty ubiquitous like WebAssembly, well, then why can't in an app running an Electron shell be Blazor-based? And where does Electron run? It runs on the desktop. desktop. Right. So now you're writing a Blazor desktop app. Yeah. So what if there was a Win32 shell uh -oh. that Microsoft built? I'm but Chris starts totally to say making what if. this up. Yeah. What if Microsoft built a Win32 shell? I mean, look, there's Centennial. Let's get Win32 into the Microsoft Store. That was what that project was all about. What if Microsoft came up with a generic Win32 shell that ran WebAssembly. So now I can write Blazor and forget Electron, just ship with a Win32 shell over top of it. Maybe right. even provide, maybe even with some NuGet packages, getting some interop to Win32. I, I made all that up, but I actually think there is some thinking here about we're getting .NET to target a lot of crazy things now. Tar .NET targets x86, Linux. .NET yeah. targets Linux, sure. .NET targets Mac. Why can't and if it can target WebAssembly, well, aren't we getting to a place where it can target anything? Seems that way. It also seems like this pruning slash tree shaking idea. I'll go back to that for a minute. Wouldn't an app just be better? Forget the fact that I'm just running it on my Windows server. You know, forget all this other yeah. cross platforming right. kind of stuff. Yep. If I get this feeling that the app would have to be better, faster, more efficient at some level if it's pruned down. Oh, yeah. And lighter. Sure, sure lighter. Yep. But like faster. And like not there just has delivery. to be something in the code. Like I'm, yeah. I didn't go to school for computer science like you did, right? No, I don't understand the way all these things work. I thought you did. <laughs> no, I, I don't. Oh, I thought you did. <laughs> well, all right. So, Rich, are you computer science? No. So no, no, no. Does anyone on this show know no, what we're talking about? So that's what the. So we have. So that's the name of the show, right? The, yeah. The, the, the uneducated, uneducated developers. But but uh, my understanding somewhere, right? Whether it's at some level, the code you call needs to execute other code, and it needs to go find that code, right? And if there's less code for it to look through, I would think somewhere at some molecular level. It's faster. What about and more just efficient. the cost of because WebAssembly is still bytecode in the way that IL is or .NET is bytecode. What about just the cost of compiling that? Right, it's going to take less time to yeah. compile. Right, it's going to be because there's less. Less is more. Look, we usually think of that in terms of interpret interpreted stuff like like JavaScript that comes down as text. It's getting compiled just in time. But guess what? Our .NET apps are getting compiled just in time too. Generally speaking. Um, the only thing that really isn't is a native XE because native XE is just it's you just ship that bytecode you ship those bytes directly to to the to the CPU practically, and that's not happening in WebAssembly even as, as I know WebAssembly is is being called like native, and certainly the browser vendors can can eventually if if WebAssembly became popular the next race among browser vendors will be having faster WebAssembly. Runtime. Yeah, that'd be cool. Right, right, because you'll be able to say things like, well, guess what? That app that you love is faster on yeah. our platform. I just noticed that uh, Chops to yeah, You is hosting us. Huh? Thank you That's for that cool. host. Cool. Awesome of him to show up tonight. That's great. Always nice to have some yeah. people. Familiar face. Familiar, yeah. Big fan of this part show. Of the, part, of the, part of the family, right? Yeah, he's a big Friend fan of the show? show. Yeah, definitely a friend of the show. I like that phrase, friend of the show. That's I don't know where that, that got, what's that? It's pretty good, I like that. 
Yeah, that's that goes back to like I mean I've been hearing that on the radio for a while, but Summer Show started that. He said it's okay if you're yeah, late. Right. Better late than never. Um, Everything is on YouTube. Archive yeah, exactly. That's it. But and it's DVR. Started, you can always start from the beginning. That's true. Yeah. Whoever started that phrase, friend of the friend show. Of the though, show. I think that that's become like, you know, not ubiquitous or whatever, but I, I hear that around a lot. Yeah. So I like to be able to say that, friend so, of the show. So what do we want to do with Blazer? This group here. What are what are we going to do? We we've been we started on a quest to figure out. We got a question at Code Camp, where somebody basically said they asked that universal question of you know. All this stuff is great, but I want to know the right way to build an app, which is such a loaded question. Like we all looked at each other and said, wow, the right I'll way to build an app. I'll tell you the right way. We'll argue. Yeah. We'll be, but we thought, what a wonderful jumping off point. Mm -hmm. and, we, and, and the agreement was, well, the right way to write in, or to start your app, the right way to start it is to get the CI CD pipeline yeah, going first. We right. haven't written a single line of code yet. Right. But the, the target app here. And we talk a lot. Is, and when we is talk, so it takes longer. It takes longer. But uh, we started in Razor Pages only because we didn't want to mix learning Blazor with something super easy like this file new project. We know it's going to work on Azure because .NET Core 2.2 is there. This requires .NET Core 3, although people do deploy this. Mm -hmm. And some of the many ways that Blazor is deployed is either in an Azure app service or even just to Azure storage, uh, totally serverless, static files. Um, GitHub pages. I've seen all kinds of people posting about how here's how I got Blazor working pure Blazor client side. straight up like that. Yeah, yeah. In fact, huh. there's even a, in the documentation host and deploy ASP.NET Core Blazor, and they have a client side example in here that was a uh, here. Is this what they call it? A standalone deployment. Yeah, a standalone deployment serves the Blazor client app as a set of static files requested directly by clients. Like, how awesome is that? Huh. Like here, you can do it on IIS. Done. Here's your web config, right? But I know I, I've seen the blog post out there that's that somebody did this on uh, on GitHub Pages. Hmm. So the point is, is that we, there's going to be a lot of interest in Blazor. So we are going to change the website project over to Blazor and, and get that pushed through with Azure DevOps, and then uh, because we don't need Blazor. But it's just why not, right? Yeah, why not? I mean, let's just be clear about that. We don't That's necessarily true. need it. Could it could be Razor Pages or NBC. It, it'd or, be a cool exercise. To yeah, do this I, I, do it on listen, the show. We right? want to have some fun, right? Yeah, right. I think people like to see what's new. Yeah. And uh, we've done, you know, in our lives, we've done NBC before. Right. We've done Angular. I mean, I've done Angular, right? You know, we've done some of these things. So why Angular, not? the spa, spas clearly have inspired this. Okay. So I'm curious. Do you need to see more, or what about what is there anything here that makes you say, you know, I might go to the people I work with and say, we should really consider Blazor. Well, it gets tricky. I think in any environment, any enterprise or any business, you know, that you have, it's hard to shift around a lot, right? right? Okay. So part true. of it, like right off the bat. You do that, and people go like, "What?" Right. So first mm -hmm. of all, you know, are you building anything new tomorrow? That might be a limiting well, factor. That's true too. Okay. That's true too. Maybe you're not. But you even if you're building true. something new, and there's a point where you stay with what you've got, the okay. technology stack yeah, sure. that yep. you have, uh, for so many purposes, training, um, shifting, just our mind. Like I got to put on my blazer hat today and my Angular hat tomorrow. Right. You know, like all these Who on the things. team knows it? Right. Who knows it? Do you have to hire people? Um, are they going to learn? But I think the so I think the core question you're getting at is, you know, if the stars are aligned, if you can take out all those other things, are you going to try Blazor, right? Now the first the first thing I have is uh, I, I think I know I'm not positive on this, but like, is this go live, right? So I mean, can we use Blazor today? Today, today the answer is it is not go live, right? But I am pretty sure, and we're all we all should go double check for ourselves. Is that part of the build announcement was that uh, the RC, which is supposed to come out later this month, will be go live. Okay, and, and that's pretty go, typical. Yeah. Right, is go live. Candidates usually get a go live license. And go live just for those yeah. who may yeah. not Good know to clarify. means that it's not to production yet. Right. The fully release GA application. Right. But when it gets to that release candidate yep. stage, you can start building with yep. it, and 
it will be supported. Yep, you can yeah, call I them up. Yeah, I think it's support for it. You can call them so up. So somewhere along the line, I don't get why that's not it's like the next level. Like, it's supported. Well, well because what can happen in an RC, yeah. unlike version 1, yeah. is although you strive oh, to have no saying. breaking yeah, changes, right. yeah. There's gonna be, and there's you strive be to have no API changes. Yeah, I forgot about that. What if there's a big whoops? Yeah, and, that, and we've seen that happen. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. that, that it happens. Yeah. That you're right, between the RC. So so then... Not that that doesn't happen in version so 1. So now you have <laughs> RC, and even even after RC, you have your, you know, the official go live date, yep. whatever you call right. that. Right, for GA. But do you still, GA, thank you, yeah. Do you still wait and let that bake for a little while? Some people do. I would think, like, you've talked about your organization yeah. and some of the structure that they have. Some people it's, do, right? Uh, yeah. Um, I've certainly used things prior. I, you know, it wouldn't be the first time I've jumped on the bandwagon early oh. uh, and got in on it. So there were people a year ago who, if they happened to be watching like Jeff Fritz's uh, stream on Twitch, um, or even just the ASP.net, the, the community stand-up, anything that you can watch live, and somebody would put forth the caution. I'm talking a year ago. Like, hey, we've got our first preview of Blazor. Try the bits out. Tell us what you think. This isn't ready for production or People anything. Somebody it, right? would jump into chat and say, like, oh, man, I shipped the yeah, website. Course, just, right, this yeah. is great. I love it. We're using this all the time. And it's but like, you know oh, what? That's hey. actually kind of cool in a way because that the product teams end up with, like, good feedback. Sure. Oh, yeah. Right. If someone's willing to take that risk for them. Yeah. And they're saying we don't support it. So they, they're in the clear. Sure. You know? Somebody's going to do that. Now, I can't do that at work, right? Like, I don't feel like that, that that's too risky. Well, it depends on the project, right? It sure. depends on the project. Yeah. Listen, when they say, oh, we went live with that, it might be a little pet right. project that's just sure. fun. Like, like, like in all It could in still all be for thing, work. The site we're building. What if it's internal? But the site, like, we're building. Yeah, right. Would it really it matter? Work. I mean, like, if it went down. Right. We're not, it's yeah. not affecting nope. international commerce. And sometimes right. that <laughs> even happens at work. Sometimes you build little utilities yes. or little things that, or they might even just be for your team. Right. Yeah. They're important. It's live. They get it's work in done. production. Yeah. 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 I mean, there are access databases that we put live. I mean, it's <laughs> that's today. riskier. That's today. riskier Not than today. last week, right? <laughs> Deploying an access database I last week. I keep hearing about new access databases all the time. Like it's Ancient Coder says, they, if you can deploy the project, why not? Thanks for joining us tonight. Ancient Coder, yeah, that's, that's awesome. a good point. You can deploy the project right now. So I know yeah. for a fact, <laughs> in the not? past year, there have been people who will chirp in on, on Jeff's show or even on the ASP.NET community stand up and say, this is great, we went live with it. And then everybody will cringe and be like, well, you know, good <laughs> thing is working for you. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, like we have the schedule that's been announced. Um, yeah. Up, I've got it up on my machine oh, right now. So the upcoming chip dates are here. .NET Core 3's preview release, release candidate this month. Let's see if it happens. If it happens this month, then, then we get go live right then. And uh, GA in September, if that, if that, which September, and look, I'm not saying this is when it would happen. I certainly don't have any information, but I know something that is happening in September is .NET Conf. That would be a reasonable time to ship around then. That might be really cool. Sure. And you then, know what uh, they should do? <laughs> You're smiling already. No, I don't know. I just can't so wait to hear I what they should do. I would love to have, you know, Steve Sanderson and, uh, and uh, who else is that? John uh, Galloway, is it right? John John Galloway from the Community Standup or .NET Foundation. Yeah, sure. yeah. He's, doesn't he work on that with him? Or, uh, oh, no, I'd say of, the two big John names Galloway, that I think of, of are Dan Roth. Sorry, Dan Steve Roth. I, mix, I, I was mixing. No, I was mixing. I was mixing up Dan Roth and and, and uh, John. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. I know they're probably all watching, so I apologize right. to them. Sure. <clears throat> so what I'd like to do all is them. invite them out, especially now that I just butchered one of the guys. But uh, invite them both out to Tech Bash. Oh yeah! To do the announcement absolutely at Tech Bash because we that's wouldn't in November. Mind. That's in November. It would be okay. It would give them time if they don't do mind the tech delaying. Bash. I wouldn't mind. Well, no, the LTS the three point one releases in November. That's right. I know a conference that's yeah. in November. Now listen, I'd have to make room. Like we'd have oh. to push some things around. <laughs> you might have to rearrange some deck chairs. But if they wanted to, if they wanted to do an announcement. <laughs> You mean that like would how be you, like a cool, and we stream live, yeah, that's like true. that stuff. We would we would certainly stream that for them. That's true. Um, so maybe we'll send some emails out. Yeah, offering. I mean, you know, the funniest thing is, and I'm I'm completely obviously joking about the whole thing, but, but only you never of. know what bit, would happen yeah. if you ask. 
Right. right. You say, right. hey, well, I seem to recall a conversation <laughs> that led to the director of .NET coming to Tech Bash right. that was very similar to like, what do you think hey. about? And there you go. That's and how it happens, He looks right? like this, and he goes, yeah, I'm available that day. Yeah. And then the next thing you know, yeah, there there might be an event already. Yeah, so I'm sure in they fact, have. If I remember well, they correctly, have their own events in the fall. They have isn't ignite. Uh, in ignite, the fall? yeah, ignite yeah. is like it's the week, week before. before. That's sure. why we would never get that because right. ignite is actually the week before or two weeks before. Uh, it's the week before. It's the week before. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so three point one. Yeah, but wait, Look I, at the I feel like here, hang on, so, we just said the week before. The week before what? Tech Bash, Tech Bash is <laughs> November. You can't see. Can we zoom in? Tech Bash is. Why don't you bring 12th? up the website on your page there? Oh, yeah, yes. no, okay. November you can do 12th that to way. 15th. Um, Great conference here in the Northeast, in the Poconos, at the Kalahari Resort. Yeah, and you I stay think, there and you get the water park. I think tickets in. are going to be going on sale pretty soon. We're locking down. We're behind, but we're locking down our workshops because you can't really buy tickets until workshops are announced, right? Mm -hmm. We've started to finalize our speaker selection. Some people. Haven't submitted yet. Yeah. Uh, although even though you know, it's closed, really, if you know uh, yeah, somebody, exactly. you might be you know, able to. Yeah, maybe. This guy hasn't submitted yet, but uh, anyway. So anyway, um, it's going to be a great conference, and there is a lot going on. I've been pretty quiet about it. Haven't been blogging about it. Haven't been tweeting about it. None of us really have been. We've been sort of heads down in the in the logistics, the, st the scheduling, no, and things like that. It's a ton of fun. It's a ton of fun because, first of all, like I said, built in, the water park's there. And so just as part of being a hotel guest there, you get admission to the indoor water park and during the week there's nobody there oh, right so you have the place yeah. to yourself especially for like Orrin Novotny who like just in the middle of the day blows off sessions and yeah. just goes to the water park <laughs> Ashley Grant is another guy they're yeah. just in the water park the whole time these guys but this is the only conference well I think we might have stole this tagline from another there's a few conferences that are at water parks but this is a conference where slides are a good thing right yes. people always say more code less slides mm -hmm. but we like the slides at the Kalahari yeah, yeah. right so Oh, ancient yeah, coder, ancient that, coder asked if videos were released, and so the tech oh, bash. Oh yeah, thanks, ancient tech coder. Bash, yeah. you, know, you guys, nice. do you have a vanity URL? You have 114 subscribers. We'll have to talk. Yeah, we got to manage this channel. Um, who so manages? I thought it was. I thought it was you guys doing it for. Oh, Jason. Jason. I thought it might be Jason. Yeah, yeah. Jason. So I, another member of the tech bash foundation, which is which is Andy and, and some other uh, gentlemen, long time members Gaylord. of this community. Yep. Um, the, there are videos here, you know, the kids talking about the fun they had. My the son is on here, right there, yeah. Yeah, the kids tech yeah. day and everything. And it is it definitely becomes a family event for the weekend, but we do yeah, have sessions. Yeah, look at this stuff, yeah. We do have sessions. And there's a good amount of them and some really good sessions. We had Scott Hunter's keynote and yep. then sessions uh, for a couple of days. And I think we might even have more this year. So yeah. to answer the question that Ancient Coder gave us, you know, talking about, you know, are there videos about it? Um, it's it's tech bash dev conference is the search on youtube yeah now there's no videos of the water slides no we don't have right we don't have the bathing suit stuff in there which you know we kept it official we kept yeah. it official uh well, we were talking about blazer and he had pointed out in the chat that the excitement over blazer led to the early experimenting people coming back and saying in streams in chats at conferences i love this i'm already using it that's definitely got to be a boost to conference for some confidence for something that oh, they yeah. came out with and said this is experimental we might not ship it we yeah. don't know what what do you uh, they wanted to hear people say i think they needed some of the standing ovations that they got at certain events it where pushed people it along saw this and said wow it, it pushed it along a little bit i mean you need to validate an idea before you go all in right know? well because when they first announced it it was was an idea. is that maybe yeah. <clears throat> some of the past though was like for example who validated asp.net Scott Guthrie. One, uh, supposedly on a plane, right? That's <laughs> the that's the that's the tall tale, is uh, like who vetted that before it was just here you go, developers at PDC two thousand, here you go, right? right? Who vetted MVC before it was like yeah we're gonna do this? Yeah, I think that MVPs probably got whispers. Well, there's a lot there have but a I lot of know, insider programs, because right? There were a lot of those ASP. days. The ASP insiders, got insiders. I'm right? a member of that group um, as well, but I wasn't in the day, but. I remember having that viewpoint then of like, I'm on the outside, but I'm very plugged in. I pay attention. And so, boom, here you go, World C Sharp. What is this? Yeah, but see, now things it's are so totally different. Totally different. Right? You want to watch the uh, stand up? Yeah. Dot the C Sharp stand up. Yeah. I mean, how great is this? C Sharp design are, language meeting, dot stand up. And, stuff like that. and I think it helps. They get immediate feedback from so, people who are. Ancient Coder says, I hope Blazer doesn't become, become the next, the next knockout. knockout. So, you came in a little late. You mentioned this, but we're. 
knockout was great. Yeah. Right. It served its purpose. Maybe, um, maybe he means that because knockout isn't really the popular thing. You maybe you can clarify why you don't want it to be the next knockout. Maybe you hated knockout. Um, but uh, I don't know. Blazer seems to have a you know some momentum going and, for it, and also attributed to Steve Sanderson. Also attributed to Steve uh, as a brainchild, anyways. Right. Mm -hmm. Look. There are tons of great people working on it. Even you know, Steve would not if we, he would not let that comment stand. He'd be like, "There's dozens of great people more working on all the things that are making Blazor happen, from the WebAssembly targeting to ASP.NET itself." I mean, look, ASP.NET re these Razor components have become so generalized that in the documentation they're talking about how like you really like Razor components, use them in your MVC app, and they show how to do it. Right. You can render it in MVC, render it in Razor pages. So the idea is really a component-based model that serves all of ASP.NET, but hey, if you want a completely component-based framework, we showed that tonight, so. I like, you know, I'm just thinking, uh, I wonder what ideas Sanderson's got in the back of <laughs> his head. What's his idea today? That like, yeah, I mean, he's, you know, like he's got these ideas that are just great. Like, I wish I could have one good idea. One good idea? Yeah, all right. All right, so where are we? What are we talking about? What else is going on? We did a lot of Blazor. We know that uh, uh, the next month's hands-on lab for Philly.net is beginning a tour of Docker and Kubernetes with Jason Van Brackle, who is a local community leader and really one of the experts on containers, and not just containers in general, orchestration, mm -hmm. um, understanding different orchestration platforms. And if you want to even understand Windows containers, he's he's up on he's on top of it. Yeah, he knows Jason's what's been going quite a while. on. He yeah, knows his stuff. He knows his money. He's going to do and a hands-on lab. Guy. He's a great guy. guy. Great guy. Great guy. Hands-on lab with Docker, first Wednesday of August. You know, it's, it's, he's another example of, uh, I don't know, maybe maybe this is, maybe I'm giving us too much credit here in Philly, but we've got a strong community here in Philly. Yeah, Having guys so. like, you know, he's, he's you know, one of our locals. Yep. Like, there's a lot of people in Philly that, like, are strong knowledgeable on, on a lot of topics yeah. and we're kind of lucky to have that right yeah. we've had jason here uh, yeah friend of the show friend of the show we've had <laughs> him here <laughs> sitting next to us we got to have him on to talk more about you know to, to teach us about containerization maybe so could we do that next wednesday like afterwards well or was that next hands-on lab will be the Sorry. first wednesday in first august, wednesday in august. august. yeah right so uh oh see wonder what, can, what's the date on that you know that'll the be the eighth i'm oh, sorry okay. the seventh Oh yeah, so I'll be in. You know, I'm just saying, I'll be in Europe. No, oh, uh, well, you know. I'm coming we'll in. No, I'm coming MTC. back on the sixth. We'll yeah. I'm coming in on the sixth. Oh no, 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 no! I'm saying I'm coming back on the sixth. Oh, okay. You're trying to kick me out of my seat already. <laughs> this isn't really my seat. Does it have my name on the back? Doesn't not yet. No. See? There's no name on this. It's not seat. on your shoe, Andy's. Andy. No, I'm not even wearing any <laughs> shoes right now. Actually. Another Toy Story reference. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, oh. oh he says bit. knockout was great. I think it should have been. Oh, that's what you're saying. Yeah, I it, agree. For a while, until yeah, it the was other big. framework, until yeah. Angular got crushed. It was big. Yeah. So ancient coders, I think, on the same page we yeah. are. It was big. In um, fact, it spawned other ideas like Breeze. Remember Breeze? Oh, I mean, there was all these different direct things. to the database. There was all these the, different from browser code. There's all these different things. Um, yeah. But I think what happened in modern. I mean, there, there became this point where we had all this. This I don't want to call it fragmentation, but you you used all these different. You used Modernizer to figure out what features a browser had. And then you use Breeze if you want. I mean, Breeze, I think, kind of came in and went because it kind of it showed up just as Angular was showing up. And Angular was Angular sort of came along and said, "We are prescriptive. This is how, boom, right? right. You do everything this way, service based. Um, although they changed to be more component based now. I used to use Require JS. Yeah. At the same time, right? Yeah. It was like dependency right. injection yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, I don't know who you know who developed. Honestly, I have no idea who. who Put that together and stuff like that you know but um so to to the, the originally the question was what what would you know looking at this how excited are people going to be about blazer and part of the question is is are you starting something new at work because it is very hard to say we're going to shift so we don't know those answers we're going to have to find out um I, it certainly seems to me that it has a lot of of uh of passionate fans and I think it does. you know the the conference halls are filled. Um, in this latest video, he said, "Just so I can get an idea, how many people here just know what they've heard of Blazor?" And, the, and everybody raised their hands. Where in the past, it was kind of like, "So I've got something new to show you. None of you have any idea what this is." So that's good. That means mm -hmm. the name's out there. 
and I'm, I think it's really interesting, right? And I'm a fan of, I don't have any problem with JavaScript. I actually really, I think it's very interesting. I've come, I've come to like JavaScript. But, you know, but now here it's an... Uh, yeah, I kind of wish this was here before. I <laughs> could say I almost like threw in the towel and like succumbed to JavaScript and now I'm a fan. It's sort of like my, my experience with, uh, with DevOps. You know, like I didn't want to do it, but it was a necessary evil and now I'm a big fan and I love it and it makes my job easier. And I feel like I've gone that same way with JavaScript. Yeah. And I think a lot of developers have the last couple of years. Yep. Um, I hope that Blazor, from that angle, Blazor's not too late, right? Because now everybody says, well, why do we need that? We have JavaScript. JavaScript's well, there's great. a lot of people who I think are saying the WebAssembly thing they're hoping is their way to a platform or language that they enjoy. And it should be about what you right. enjoy and are productive with. So, and you know, we, we got to have another local community member who's very passionate about functional programming, like um, Stashu Korek could come on and tell us about, I'm pretty sure there's an F-sharp version of Blazor. I mentioned it. F-sharp. I mentioned it last year when I talked about Blazor, and he said, like, oh, it's already done. It's called F-something. Yeah, yeah. F-Blazor. I don't think that's what it's really called. <laughs> F-sharp Blazor. Not. So I, yeah. I hadn't <laughs> thought that comment through before I said it, but... <laughs> It's uh, Blazor just Sharp. Lost any maybe. chance of getting Sanders? Oh, here we go. Show. Bolero. Bolero. Bolero brings Blazor to F Sharp developers Bolero. with an easy to use like architecture. Okay. Right? Interesting name. Oh, you don't. So now the name, forget it. Yeah, You're it's not done. Yeah. And it may not just be Bolero, right? It may not just be that. It's just I went looking, and uh, and look other panes of glass, ASP.NET Blazor rendering with F Sharp. So clearly, people are interested. Well, you know, when I interview people, Blazor with an MVU architecture. Look at this. When it's I do interviews, and I don't mean show interviews, I mean like job interviews, right? Yeah. I still continually, you know, meet the .NET developer that doesn't want to do JavaScript at all. Mm -hmm. I mean that yeah. is not a that is no, not a thing of the past, right? No. Um, and they say, what? When does the visual come back to Visual Studio? Well, because we're not dragging and dropping anymore, right? And I mean, maybe that's okay. I think that's bad. I'm a what's but that? It was for a long time. We used to drag and drop our web forms and yeah, but dragging. Yeah, but then, and, uh, I, I, let's but, not confuse those two things between it's Visual Studio. No, but but you're saying drag right, and that's drop, a and different I'm issue. saying that's a different. That's a different you're saying issue. just you want to stay in .NET. Some people want yeah, to stay in .NET. Right. There was a, certainly a time when I said, "Well, that's why I started doing Sil Silverlight was so yep. appealing, right?" Sure. I mean, again, there, you know, I get in trouble saying the word Silverlight, but no, not uh, right. that's it's why it was supported. so appealing. Still supported. Yeah, it's got two more years. Or I knew that like he that. was going to bring up uh, support life lifelines. At some point, you're going to tell me that like Blazor will be good. I was waiting for you to go into Blazor will be good because it's already uh, supported until 2030, based on the fact that it well, runs on such and such a because it's well, not in that core. <laughs> but yeah, it's but, a shorter life. So shorter. Oh. So then, why would I even take it on? When I can still use web forms, you told me this last week. Yeah, web forms, web live forms lives time. forever. Right? So will classic ASP as a component of Windows is going to live a very. Long well, that's time. what it was. It was classic Supported. ASP. That's the one. You I'm can still of. call up and get help, and believe me, I will not be taking that call. I'd love to get you started on this stuff. This mm. is like a great one. Like you, you know. So, uh, you know. So Blazor, I think we did. I think we chewed it up, spit it out, and then next time we'll we'll maybe take a look. It might be a good opportunity to take a look at actually deploying throughout. That'll give us a chance to, to see if, if um, what the update is on this latest .NET Core preview being shippable to, to Azure. It might be just fine. Somebody just mentioned it tonight, and we said, yeah, you know, I don't know. Maybe it works. Maybe it doesn't. <laughs> and who knows, by next week, we might, have a, we might have an RC. It's entirely possible we might have an RC of, a, of .NET Core 3, right? Yeah. 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 So this show, the future of this show, is still gonna probably be still gonna be after. Well, somebody said, "What's that says? .NET Rocks." Inch Coder's asking about .NET Rocks. What about .NET? Oh, did you mention? He just, just I mean, he mentioned the name of .NET Rocks. Oh, he's saying. I think he's saying .NET Rocks. rocks. Yeah, yeah. Rocks. yeah, yeah. I thought he was talking about the show. Yeah, it's a great rocks. show. Yeah, yes. a great show. Yep. Big a lot of people inspire aspire to be on that show even just once in their life, right? A lot of people aspire to be that show. Well, that's true. That's true. But they, a little bit of a. Uh, it's, it's, Great work for a very long time, right? Can't yep. Can't fill those shoes. No. Nope. So I, I interrupted. So yeah. So this show continues to be uh, Wednesday nights, uh, whether or not we have a meeting and and we can make it. <laughs> well, yeah. Some that that could always be an issue. Um, but uh, the show itself has a, a new name. 
So uh, and, and working on the new name, the new the new logo. Um, there's you know we're talking about a website to be built in Blazor. Well, guess what? What and what's the hardest part about naming something? It's coming up with a name. No, not and then. <laughs> Securing that name. Oh yes, then seeing if that name is available. You need to get the name. Or, or what you're doing here, you got to get the Twitch. We managed to get the Twitch mixer, Twitter, the URL, DNS, the domain yeah, name. Yeah, domain name. But we know there were some things we might have let that we get Instagram. Stuff. We might have gotten Instagram. I what don't else know. was on the list though? We had a list. We of had all another other list, stuff like LinkedIn that, page, well, well, Facebook yeah, page. Yeah, yeah. right. And LinkedIn. we've probably forgotten one, and so Ancient Coder will run out right now. He's gonna and go go. <laughs> Go take it. Yep. Yeah. So, Rich, are you getting ready for something over there? Or? Possibly. Maybe. <laughs> okay. So, there's a, a logo. So, some rebranding going right, on. Right, right. Because um, Philly.net's great. We're going to continue. Obviously, we're supporting Philly.net. We're always going to be streaming Philly.net. You'll see our faces there. You see our faces at Tech Bash. Um, but we think there's an opportunity to to continue the show, not just on a weekly basis, but we might even have other content that might not necessarily be live streamed. So it just seemed like we might as well get started with that. And <laughs> that show is called, baby? Keep pamping, stretch. The new stretch show is stretching. So, so, we have a, so we worked on this name, yeah. right? Uh, we worked on a logo. Well, we didn't work on a logo. No. We, we had someone work on a logo. We think we're off to a good start. I mean. Yeah. You know, um, and so the whole idea here is that Philly.net content is strong, right? Yeah. And, and we, we love that content. I mean, we've been a part of the Philly.net community for a long time. So now it's going to be like we will be presenting. It's sort of like a model where like um, I just like sort of blanked out on my idea what I was going to say. Um, well, we so can we can be like presenters. You can present yeah. other content like right. what you do at Tech Bash. Right. Ready? You guys were there at Tech Bash, and the content was on the Tech Bash channel, mm -hmm. right? But it was like presented by Philly Tech Talk or whatever your name was at that time. Maybe you didn't really have a name. We didn't really have a name. Yeah, we just right. were just, there. Hey, we're and that was it. Bash. It was just Rich yeah. and, and Chris, right? So I think the idea here is to put a name around that brand, right? And then it can be, and I'm not trying not to say it because Rich is trying to work something up in the background. I think there's another comment. I can't see it blocked by uh by Rich said. said that he, he won't. He won't. He won't. He won't steal. Uh, okay. Name. He won't be stealing. Right. Thanks. Um, so, so the whole idea is to have like an independent brand. Yeah. I think is the whole idea. Right. Something that's that's uh, you know easy to remember and uh, sort of talks about what we do because the show and I say we but it's you know it's your guys' show is more than it's more than the Philly.net content right and I think it's kind of cool to have their own brand. Right. Um, and so. <laughs> so I can't get my laptop to connect. So if oh. you can head to our Discord, yeah, oh, I can yeah. just bring out yeah, 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 because um, I can't present. I can just click on that logo, right? The white one here. Yeah. Yeah. So I've got it up on my screen. All right. You ready? Yeah. Can yep. you? Just, hang on. Let's get in preview here. Uh, that. There it is. The Dev Talk the Show. Dev Talk Show. Wait a minute, you're not seeing that. Oh, oh wait a minute, it is up on that. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm seeing it. it. Yeah, yeah. I'm seeing it there. Hang on. Oh, now oh, it's gone. gone. <laughs> it's gone. It's over. We got to come yeah, up with a new it. name. Yep, that was it. Um, oh my God, the phones are ringing off the hook. <laughs> there you go. People That's are really. Better. Oh, I like the way you did that behind. Behind. The, right here. And now the over phones there. are ringing off the hook. Yep. Everyone is really excited that we're calling it the Dev Talk Show. Yeah. So, what does that mean? We're going to talk about Dev. Yep. Dev on a show. Talk, development topics, right? Sort of generic. It could be anything. Yeah. Right. We we went back and forth on all these different kind of names of what it would be. Now, what I'd like, to, what I think can happen is when you guys come to Tech Bash, right? We host that stuff on the Tech Bash uh, mm -hmm. channels. Right. Uh, just like at Philly.net Code Camp, right? Are we we're gonna see what the Dev Talk Show presenting, or you know, like sort of like now the hosts of the Dev Talk Show are live at Tech Live bash tech or something bash, like yeah. that. You know, do things something like, like that. that. Yeah. That'd be fun. I think it's cool. Yeah. yeah. So you know, uh, ancient coder reading our minds here. Is there going to be a podcast? Oh yeah. We're, yeah. There's, there's. So I've been definitely. Yeah. I've been reading up consider. a little bit about some of that stuff. You know, our friend Jess Chadwick's giving me a little help. Um, the way, way you guys have your podcast, podcast, right? Yeah. And he was telling me. So one of the ideas was, could we just simply strip the audio? Mm -hmm. 
off of this. And I think what we all agreed is that probably 90% of the time or 80% of the time, it's, it's sufficient. And when we're, when there's code on screen, we, we, we talk about the code. And so maybe if I'm listening in my car, I think I get the gist of it, you know, where I listen to podcasts. Yeah. Right? But that is a tough thing to, to, to audio or to verbalize essentially. Right. Right. Yeah. So maybe people listen and then they come back and they say, Oh, you know, I really want to see that code. Maybe we also put code snippets up on a website, which we own a domain, but we don't have a website yet. Right. <laughs> but, and part of the thing that might become the audio side of it are the snippets and the parts of the larger version that make sense to be audio. Yeah. Now that would take editing. Of course. Right. Yeah. So that's more work. That's why I think it's easier to sort of strip it off Yeah. and just have, the talk part B, and then the people that are, you know, they like the show, they know that some parts they're just not going to see. Because we, because I think the code is an important aspect of the show. Yeah. I, I, watching you, Chris, type live here and trying things, I think is something that really sets us apart from just a, you know, a podcast, right? Yeah. But can we be in more than one place at the same time? Well, that's sure. what we're going to figure out. Yeah. So, so, so changes we'll, are coming, I think, is the net of all of the Right. Changes are minutes. coming. Yeah. So where will people go next Wednesday? I think we we're, don't still, know working. we're so, still working on it. We're still working on getting everything together. Yeah, so. next Wednesday is actually going to be a little challenging because I'm going to be out in Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> so um, is there a show next Vegas? And guess what? And guess what? I'm going to be in California. <laughs> really? Next yeah. week? Yeah, so next I'll Wednesday. be sitting okay. here. So I'll come in and sit here, but nothing will be broadcast. I'll just talk. The lights will be dark. The lights will be out. Actually, I'll be knocking on the door because I'm not allowed in the building. Right? So well, the key is, is we, we did realize that we needed a place to aggregate everything. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the Philly .net website wasn't quite it. But in terms of, you know, it, it becomes really hard after a while in these formats to say, hey, make sure that you follow us on Twitter and subscribe to us on YouTube. And certainly you want people to do all those things. But what I really want is the formats that you like are what you should subscribe to. If you're not a Twitter person, then don't follow on Twitter. Like, who cares? Right. But everybody still needs a central home, which could be the devtalkshow.com, where it just all comes together and says, here's the timeline of tweets. Here's the latest podcast, and, which could be uh, trimmed audio. And then here's, you know, right there, just put the latest video right there. And if it's live, you can embed that frame too. You know, you can embed the live show. Right. Um, and you still make sure you have all the channels on the different streaming platforms just to be inclusive of everybody. So that is technology that has to be invented on the show for the show, which yeah, could be that, very I think that's part right? of the stuff that yeah, could be can happen here on your computer. Let's build right. the website. Right. Let's build maybe uh, the um, RSS feed for for a podcast. Sure. Maybe we build that here, right? Yeah. I, I would like to be bold enough to say that the next time we go live, it will be on the new channel. Okay. Which would be two weeks. Be two weeks. Two weeks would be just so I'm looking at the calendar. You know, what is the twenty fourth? Twenty fourth. That would be exciting. Yeah. So there's no so so let's so just say there's no show be, next week. Yeah, there will, it doesn't sound like it. Since I don't think we're going to be able to yet. do one next week. Yeah, yeah. Um, time difference wise and yeah, time difference. with the content and schedule I have out there Wednesday, it's <laughs> not going to happen. Big day. Uh, yeah. So you have like a regular job. You have real things to do. Yeah. I'm Outline actually that. out there for work. Yes. Okay. So yeah. uh, imagine that imagine during that. the day, I actually during the day I have to work. Yep. It's crazy. But I think if we could aim for the twenty fourth. And then, as you said, we've got Mixer.com slash The Dev Talk Show, right. uh, Twitch.com slash The Dev Talk Show. Uh, it would be great if we could do some kind of a redirect URL off of our DevTalkShow.com to say yeah. slash video, and that takes you out to YouTube. Yep. You know, that those things we can should be able to all put in place before the 24th and then promote the heck out of it. So you think, so we're kind of like talking about this in the, like this is just our meeting. Like let's, it's just us and yeah. seven other people. It's just right. So yeah. if they have any thoughts, any ideas, feel free to chime in. Are we saying that we would try to make like a simple static page uh, for, for, the, for the, the dev talk show? Or do we want to build that here on this show? Or does it really matter? There's a chicken and egg issue there. Yeah, Throw it up is. a plain like, page. We yeah. talked about that in, the, in yeah. the Discord around it. How do we, you know, how do we do all that stuff? So uh, Discord's in progress. 
Oh, because Philly.net yeah. has a Discord. Yeah, right. But it, it it so far has, has been like folks who are here. Um, so we're figuring that out. Um, yeah, there's a lot going on. There's a lot to figure out, but it's mm -hmm. fun. It's exciting. Yeah, that's good news. It's good to announce um, that I think we've come a long way with everything we've got in place. Um, the logo has taken a little bit of a couple of interesting turns to get put in place. The but name took a while. Yeah. We've been, uh, I've been with you guys like batting around names. You guys have been talking about that for a while. Yeah. And I started throwing ideas. You had some, everyone's had some ideas. And it was one of those things where we just, I don't know whether it was the pizza or whatever it was that we were doing <laughs> last week. Last week. What well, was last week? Yeah. And all of a sudden it just hit. It's like, and okay. then we couldn't find it. Yeah. Anybody else using it, which right. has always been the problem. Yep. Yeah, so. all these good ideas that we're taking. Naming hard. Exactly. Ancient coder. Naming yeah. is the hardest part of writing code. Yeah, right? that's easy. Naming, your, naming the show and finding and having available names that you want. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's not easy. Who knew? Who knew? Yeah. Um, so now we have to get into marketing. Yeah. Right? Because let's face it, we want this thing to grow like yeah, yep. you want to be talking to people well and that's the part that I, it hasn't been done yet but i i i even if just being real conservative numbers just yep. super crazy conservative right i feel like you have to imagine there are 5000 people in the world who if they heard about a show like this would say oh yeah i'd like to watch that so if we just got those 5000 people to show up then i'd be very happy 5,000. That's not a very big number. That would be awesome. I'm talking no, about I'm the just, whole world The whole now. world, right, because why world. not? Or Because the world is just there, right? It's huge, right? Recorded it's shows. Huge. They don't so have you're to be talking here about recorded content. You're not talking about live? Live content, sure. Live would be great. It doesn't have to be here in Philly. Right. Mm -hmm. well, so, but that's my point, is that that's what the outreach is about of YouTube, Twitch, Mixer, is you know you can reach people that you never met. One of the, the, the things where I kind of really felt like I think we're onto something was the first code camp we ever did we didn't tell anybody about it. We didn't really have time. It just sort of came together. Not We're, the first code camp that we ever had. The first code camp that we streamed. We streamed, yep. We streamed one room. We had no idea what we were doing. We streamed that room. And at the end of the day, when, when we were signing off to who we thought no one, right? somebody just took the moment to type in, I'm in Germany and I've been watching on my Man. Xbox all day. And that's when I said, How does that happen, that's right? great, yeah. right? So if only we could get to the other people like this person, who if they knew about it, mm -hmm. would come, right? What, where we're at today is, is we have people who found us, and that's fantastic, right? It's awesome, and we love them, and we're always gonna remember those early folks, right? right. Whether it's like Rebel Zoo on Mixer, yeah. or Ancient Coder on Twitch, we've had Skull Crusher from Twitch, oh, yeah. we've had uh, Halcyon Tribble from Mixer. Um, Chops. We've got Chops from Mixer. I've seen some people on YouTube who I think uh, maybe they've gone to YouTube because the other two platforms weren't working or something. But, um, you know, so we've had, you know, Cryonis come from Mixer. Um, they found us. And so right. my feeling is you got to figure, uh, I named like about five or six people. So 4,995 more to go that, that just right. got to hear about it. Yeah, I will tell you. <laughs> I like the optimism, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm with I don't you. Even think that's a big I'm with number. you on this. Now, I will say from experience, it's harder than it seems, right? So I'll take the example of Tech Bash. Yeah. Right. We said let's plan this developers conference in between Philly and New York. Yep. Where there's two huge developer communities. Huge, huge, huge yep. right? And there is and New Jersey, you can really New Jersey. Well, of course, that's reason. part of the thing, right? No, Delaware's New Jersey, a lot of the attendees come from Hartford, New Jersey, Connecticut right? is But a even big if we take community. all those other things yeah. out and just look at New York and Philly, you right. think, how hard would it be to get 500 people to come? Right, that was a good number, 500. Sure. Well, let me tell you something. To get 500, now that's a paid event. It's a yeah. different animal. We're comparing apples and oranges, but the concept's the same. Yeah. How many, uh, to use a marketing term, how many impressions do you need how many times do, does someone need to hear the word the dev talk show dot com or you know mixer slash the dev talk show? How many times does someone need to hear about that uh, in order for them to tune in, right? How many people do you so how many people need to hear about it to get that to happen, right? And you know, what's a good hit ratio, so to speak, if if you're looking at that? 
And the fact is, you need a lot of impression to get 5,000 people to come, or four, 500 people, you need a magnitude of, yeah. you know, a lot, right? Right. Now, is it a 10x? Think, what's that? Is it like 10x? Oh, I'm sure. It's pro- yeah, it's pro- I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I don't remember what it was. I probably did some research on it in the past, but, you know, we would think that, um, you know, you want thousands and thousands, like in the tens of thousands of people to, you know, 10,000 people probably hear about something to get 500 people to show up. So I don't know. Mm-hmm. I'm making up a number. So we got, this work is cut out. I'm saying it's not simple, but with things like Twitter, you know, with, with these communities, it should, we should be able to grow this. I think, you know, we've, like you said, you've named some people that are on our side or that are already tuning in. Mm-hmm. Hopefully they'll get on Twitch and you'll find a good community. So we are on Twitch. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. Is what Ancient Coder's saying. Yep. Uh, and um, Chops doing the mixer love there. Yeah, so we got, you know, people are on both, right? Which is cool. Yep. And uh, I think that's that's the thing. You know, we're trying to spread out. that We have very easily the capability to reach all of those platforms. Right. And using that as a way of catching them from that live portion and right. gathering the communities we're doing it. But then um, there's always that archive thing there, so... And it would be great. Listen, it would be great to reach five thousand people. Yeah. But I will also tell you, and we've talked about this before. Be fine too. <laughs> there are user groups around the country that I've been to that I spoke at that are happy when ten people show yep, up. I know. Right. Right. And so we when ten when ten people, when show, up. 10 people right. show up, what's that? We were happy when ten people showed up tonight. Yeah. But when ten people show up, there was more than that. By but there's yeah. yeah. When there's a few people watching this, if we're doing something that helps a, a few people, great. And we're having fun. Yeah. Right. You know, right. So it doesn't have to be about the numbers, then, but it certainly does even, get. You know, like like you said, 10, 11 people watching live now, and then after the fact, let's just say a hundred watch it over the next year. Right. That's helping a lot of people, and it's it's yeah, good. That's when a good you number. you consider that the user groups, like you said, are happy to have a couple dozen. Sometimes you get lucky, and and the topic's just right, and we fill right. up the room, and, uh, and and other times you just say, well, you know, we you kind of. It's not even this necessary that you miss. It's summer. Yeah, oh, we've always course, had yeah. lower attendance in the summer. Absolutely, that's just how it works. So. We can't offer free pizza on this show. Yeah, no. that's true. Most user groups, you know, half the people come for the pizza, <laughs> right? Isn't that like, there is you that? Know, yeah. Um, although we do the primos here, which is some. No, but I mean, on the sh- on this show, yeah, on the stream, you don't get the free pizza unless we start sending out coupons. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, subscribe. How about this? We say subscribe or like, like us on. And, and, YouTube, we'll get you, and we'll send you a coupon for. Uh, or we would be doing one how of those. Would you re, how would you be rebranding? No, so so it's a good point. Net, yeah, that's Coder's a good question. Right. Ancient Coders asking. So Philly.net is still the home of the user groups, uh, Code Camp. And that's Bill's. And, yeah, yeah. And Bill Wolf is the president of Philly.net. We're active members and certainly take part in the planning. And, and I write a lot of the labs. So yeah. yeah, right. It's not like nobody's going anywhere. We meet in this building. Um, and we've even talked about like you know how do we keep posting you know and promoting each other because we definitely want folks to to be at Philly.net meetings no doubt about it. So yeah, so the idea is that that doesn't get rebranded at all, right? No, That's yeah. Philly.net. However, and what 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 the thinking is, uh, less meetings. I don't think there's going to be less meetings. Well, Bill was saying we don't necessarily have a July meeting going. Oh, well, if you're talking about that, I don't think that's a permanent less meeting. So there's the Philly.net meetings are going to be our once technically twice a month. Right. With the hands on labs and the regular meetings. Right. And those go on. And this technology will still be used. Yeah. Yeah. On Twitter. I'm sorry. On Twitch slash Philly.net. Let's be clear about that. Right. That content is going to be there. Right. And on YouTube. Philly.net. And their branding. And States. their branding. Maybe an advertisement for this show. And vice right. versa. Some cross plug. Yeah, right. right. And vice versa. So um, think of it more as a, I think it's more of like a, sort of like it's a partnership. It's a spin-off. Or a spin-off. Yeah, spin-off. But it, it, I think it provides independence for this show, right? Um, so I don't think there's any, oh, it's saying good. Yeah, I don't think there's any less stuff. I think there's more. No, I mean, the code counts are still... Super popular for Philly.net. Yeah. Um, I just think, you know, summer has been a tough time to, like, like he's trying to put together a talk topic for, for next month even. And, and in the past, we've often done 15 minutes of fame in July. And I'm not yeah. sure that would come was, together in two weeks. It was, on, I was surprised because it's actually on the, 
the uh, meetup page. It says, yeah. uh, it says uh, 15 minutes of fame. And I noticed he said, well, we're not going to probably have a meeting. Yeah. Uh, now, you know, it's hard for, listen, you know, Bill's yeah. been doing this for years. He wants to take a vacation probably, you know, in the summer. <laughs> so that that's a fun meeting for people who are new to kind of get into oh, yeah. speaking and do. Right. But we need eight, you know, break it down, a two-hour session. We need eight people right. Right. to step up and say, hey, I'm going to present something for 15 minutes. Yeah, I mean, Bill usually gets... People, you know, actually, last time he sent me, I remember him saying if people weren't like sort of jumping at it. Yeah. I think the reason people don't jump on, I can, I can tell it from experience. The reason that speakers don't sort of jump on that 15 minute of fame thing is because it got lost in the, in your email or something like that. Because believe me, when you reach out and say, hey, can you do it? And someone else, can you do it? Everybody says, sure, I'll do it because it's fun. And I was right. on the fifth, first, I think I was on the first ever 15 minute panel. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that's fun. part of the, the thing that Bill is kind of, potentially feeling in that, you know, somebody's got to go and do the wrangling of the, it's a lot of of work. the speakers. And it is. It's yeah. a lot of work. Uh, so I think the risk, so you talk about like, is there going to be less content? No, certainly not for Philly.net and not on this show, but the risk isn't for Philly.net here Mm-mm. because Philly.net gets all the same stuff that they can still get. Absolutely. The risk is this channel, this show, this branding, how do we get branding? Right. right. When we're they're gonna, saying, well, I'm already on the Philly.net channel. Why do I need to now go and switch over? Right. And we've had, Chris and I, and I, and I think you as well, Andy, have had some behind the scenes talk about that in that what we do here, although it started as being tangential and related to what those monthly and hands-on meetings were, a lot of the stuff, especially on the off weeks, is very different. And people who subscribe to Philly.net who come there for the hands-on labs and the monthly meetings may not want to see the content that we come and bring. Right. And that's, some might, some might not. Right. So one way to, to kind of find that out and to give us a chance to, to, to grow a brand is to go off and do our own channel. And some of those people who are still interested from Philly.net will come over, but then we'll find new people as we go out there as well. Uh, right. And then this way we don't potentially negatively impact ASP.net and uh, monthly follower meetings, the hands-on lab meetings, because if you think about it, if I'm not interested in the stuff that we do and I get a notification thinking it's a hands-on lab and it's not, do I turn the notifications off? That's right. right. If you, that's like the YouTube follower mentality thing of when do you split and do something as a separate channel. Yeah. So, so yeah. is there a way that we can? I keep saying we. I feel like you're in, in for a penny and for pound, man. Well, yeah. yeah, but is there a way to reach um, the subscribers now? Like, does, does Twitch support like offline messaging? Oh, like, can we be. send something out and say, hey, by the way, we're spinning off to this other channel? You're, you know, can we, can we let people know, like, you know, sure, Rebel Zoo and Ancient Coder, like these, they're on here now, uh, you know, but if they're not, yeah. How would what would they do next week? They'd be like, "Uh oh, where is that? Where is those, where are those guys?" You know. I think that's an interesting thought. Right. I don't. I'd have to dig into it, but I'm not aware of anything in Twitch or Mixer right. that lets you ping the the people that yeah. way. What? I don't think they let you spam anybody. No, right. I would. I don't know if they do. Right. And, but I think what we might do instead is next Wednesday we're not going to do a show. Maybe mm-hmm. in the meantime we do a quick five minute video saying, hey, we're not here this week, but uh, check us out next week here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, cast you know, it. as we kind of lay out our yeah, grand Rebels plan. Rebels is saying cast, and that's what I thought, but yeah. you guys seem to think that that's not, uh, it's not as easy or something like that, but, but I it's thought it's easy. Oh. It's just. Yeah, we can't cast directly. That's the yeah. problem. So we get, using Restream, we can point to one YouTube, one Twitch, and one Yeah, YouTube but can't channel. the other channel host? They, host. and go ahead, you get Chris's. So hosting works, except that, the large majority of your users, like if I'm, let's say I haven't turned off notifications for a channel, whether this is Mixer or Twitch or, or YouTube even, um, when somebody goes live that I'm subscribed to on YouTube or they go live on Mixer or they go live on Twitch, I get an email, drops in my box. I could sign up for notifications on my phone. Yeah, okay. I could do right. that too. Mm-hmm. But if somebody hosts, those notifications don't go out. So what you're saying is if we go live on the Twitch or Mixer slash the Dev Talk Show, and the Philly.net channels are hosting it, those subscribers won't get notified. They don't get a notification. Okay, correct. Now, but, but people but, do but, camp in channels. 
that's sure. a known thing for especially popular channels. Like if we went to Jeff's C Sharp Fritz channel right now, I'm pretty sure that there are people camped in there. What does that mean? Camped. It means that, that yeah. they, they he's not on right now. He's not live. But, but they're yet, watching whatever people he's... are in the channel. Right. And they might be watching whatever he's hosting, or right. sometimes it becomes a community they're where just you hanging chat. Out talking. Even, oh, yeah, wow. that can happen too. That's interesting. So, so but part of this with this rebranding is this ability to now say, and we're taking there's a risk because we have a small following, right? But once you have that Twitter handle What'd that is unique, we can tweet about. And it's not the Philly.net Twitter; it's the no. the Dev Talk Show it. Twitter. Right, 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 yeah. right. Now, when we get these people, like we say, hey. Uh, everyone that's watching now, subscribe or follow us at uh, the Dev Talk Show on Twitter. Yeah. Right. So we can start making announcements. Now they know. Well, we just go to the new channel. I guess it shouldn't be that hard. No, I agree. It's it's light and it's the right time to move. I think yeah. is what it makes sense. We eventually yeah. decided not to fret about it today. Right. Let's just do it. Let's just do yeah. it, and, and and we'll make sure we get to the the people that we see. It'll work out. Yeah, and having someone having an influencer on the show is a good idea from Ancient Coder. Uh, I like this. I like this. I love when people are like. It's nice feeling like they care. And they they care continue. enough to not, you know, they're listening, but they're actually going to type something. I mean, it, it, yeah, it's cool. You, know, you guys have a good following. And eventually, if we do it right, we can do some kind of not just text, but hopefully talk yeah. as well. Oh, have people call it? You mean like a call in yeah. show? You can do that? Yeah, I can do anything. Yeah. yeah. Wow. It could be done. That's cool. That's all. Well, that'd it's all be tech. fun to be able to do that. All right. So. All right. So. It's getting late. Holy yep. moly. So we we got a, a good discussion about the code from from Blazor tonight, and I'm just gonna let me see if I still have it up here. I don't. I'll bring it so back over. Anybody? Yeah. Uh, let me let me get this set up on the fly real quick. So tonight, tonight's lab, we, we did some blazer, and it was a lot of fun. So are you going to come up with a new scheme, Bitly? Well, that'll always be the Philly.net This is the Philly.net But if we do it, 19. Well, well you wouldn't really have this kind of content. Yeah, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, why do I think it's 2017? <laughs> wow. That's the second time tonight that I've done that. Second time tonight. So <clears throat> if you're interested in the lab we did tonight at Philly.net, then you start there. You start with this link bit.ly pdn is that a bill's content or just your content uh only my content only is up sign. there okay. because uh, you know that's a good question and it's a, it's a it's an interesting starter lab where you're going to end up at github you scroll down to readme we give you all the instructions you need to go get visual studio preview and to get blazor installed and we even say like hey go to the real documentation and then you can just get started with a very simple walkthrough that that just it really just scratches the surface but the best part is, after you've gotten through that, you can cut and paste all the code in, is you get to the end, and we've got some learn more links. Like, everybody should try out the Blazing Pizza workshop. It's fantastic because it brings together, besides bringing together Blazor, it also brings together SignalR and a, a backend using, um, using a GRC, right? And pizza. And pizza, of course. And then, you know, the video that was released today by Steve Sanderson. And then I also found this particular video with Dan Roth. But honestly, just go say Dan Roth Blazer in your search yeah. engine. Do the same thing with Steve Sanderson and watch everything that they've talked about, all their interviews. Uh, our friend, I may have misspelled his name wrong here. I didn't, no, it looks, looks like I got it right. Yeah, looks close. Uh, our friend Ed, Ed Charbonneau, which um, has his own website, and he's on Twitch. And you should definitely be checking him out because his Blazor State Has Changed show is all about live coding with Blazor. And then I did some self-promotion. But other than that, uh, you should check these folks out. They're awesome. They're good friends. Um, you know, it's, it's nice to, to see that they're working so hard with this. So hope you enjoyed it. Yep. And if you didn't catch the whole show, then definitely catch us on the archive, which, which for this week I think will still be on the – it will still be at youtube.com slash philly.net. Yep. Philly D O T N E T. We're working on getting the rest set up, and um, you know, thanks for being here. And so, on on behalf of uh, of Andy Schwam and Rich Ross behind the uh, cameras, I'm Chris Gomez, and we will see you in two weeks. Yep. On the 24th, we'll get it the, up on the Twitch events feed and the YouTube events feed for you to follow.
Yeah, and a big shout out to everybody in the chat room tonight. Yeah, a lot thank of you great all so much for joining. We so. love the feedback. I'm so glad that you're passionate about this community. The the it's so happy that you're enjoying it. So great. Thanks that's, again. Yep, that's why we do it. All right, good night, guys.